knife, photograph, voice recording, letter, or even the appearance of a witness in the witness box. Real evidence consists of things which are examined by the court as means of proof upon means of proof upon proper identification, and it becomes of itself evidence. Upon proper identification, real evidence must only be relevant for it to be admitted. In S versus M2002 to SACR 411 SCA at paragraph 31. If so far as the argument regarding Exhibit 4, it is the state submission that this witness did not attempt to justify the shortage in the photographs. He conceded that certain photos were not part of the album. However, he also testified that these photos were developed from the video footage supplied to him. This real evidence was handed in as Exhibit 3, and the authenticity and, reliab and reliability is not in dispute. The state would also, w the state would also with to refer to the testimony of Dean Klimville, who testified that the original docket disappeared and the blame for missing photos cannot be levied to one officer Smith. The state submits that in order for the Honorable Court to determine the v v validity of the defense of justification, the Honorable Court also has to take into consideration the conduct of both accused in relation to their actions in avoiding this risk as a reasonable person under the circumstances would have done. The evidence of the complainant was that this unauthorized Mercedes-Benz video vehicle was not part of the convoy. In order to comply with the security protocol for the day in question, the complainant had to request authorization from VOC to allow access to the, access to the unauthorized Mercedes-Benz Veto access to the cemetery. The complainant was never given the opportunity to confirm and or verify authorization for the access of the Mercedes-Benz veto. It is the state submission that in all probability the defense would have succeeded if the two accused before court had been charged with trespassing but not assaulting the complainant. The state further submits that it is common cause that the complainant at no stage interacted with the two accused before court regarding the issue of access. Further, there were never any stage bomb directed towards the two accused before court that could have justified the unprovoked assault of the complainant. Thus, the issue of justification as defense should fail. In mm. S. Versus Chake, um, Mlambo, 1987, 1 PHH. 19A, the court of quo stated the following. <coughs> At the outset, it should be borne in mind that when, in the course of investigation of a crime, a statement is taken from a witness by the police, there is an imminent risk of inaccurate reproduction in the statement as recorded by the, pol by the police, of which the witness has in fact told the police. The extent of the risk of distortion obviously depends upon the circumstances in any given case. With reference to the credibility of the testimony of Mr. Mapisa, the state submits that Mr. Mapisa gave an explanation regarding the manner in which his statement was taken down and the reference is made to the transcripts on page 40, and 43, uh, 40 43 and 46 dated 7th day, day of April 2022. Similarly, the same applies to the complainant therein. It, it, it is absurd to expect a witness to furnish precisely the same account in evidence as given in his or her statement. Brainers 1998 2 SACR 432 SE. In Malafidiso versus the state 2003 1 SACR 583 SCA 593 J 2594 A 2 G, the quote of state. Stated the following: Discrepancies, discrepancy in statement caused by one sentence, by one sentence only, could be interpreted in one of two ways. Must, must be read in the context of the whole statement. Held that the court must handle discrepancies between different versions of the same witnesses with circumspection. First, the court must ascertain what the witness meant to say in order to determine whether there was a discrepancy and the extent of them of them discrepancy of the discrepancy your worship the court must take into account the following the fact that a statement to the police was not 
subject to cross-examination, languages, cultural difference between the witnesses and the person who took the statement, and the fact that the police did not require any explanation of a statement. Secondly, not every error by or discrepancy in the statement affects the witness's credibility. Thirdly, the different version must be evaluated hostically. Host host this evaluation includes the circumstances in which the versions were given, reasons for the discrepancies, the effect of the discrepancies on the witness's credibility, and whether the witnesses had sufficient opportunity to explain the discrepancies. Lastly, the witness's statement to the police must be weighed up against the view of okay evidence. Further, in support of this submission for the refusal of the Section 174 application, I refer the matter, I refer the matter to S. Wilson Jolie in 1981, 3SA 1233A. It was held that even though that an admission by an accused during explanation of plea is not evidence, it is still probative value. Himsra CJ in S. versus Mogatla, 1977, 9BSC 279-85E. Remark as follow in relation to the admission not recorded in terms of section 220 of the Act. Like in the case of an extrajudicial statement, the accused may be cross examined on it. Serious conflicts between his evidence under oath and his, and, and his explanation of plea can destroy his credibility, provided the, con the, the conflicts have been properly put to him. The view that everything in the explanation of plea which is not an admission in terms of Section 220 must be totally ignored cannot be supported. It is, it is part of the evidential material like any other statement made by the accused which may be proved against him in evidence, whether inculpatory or exculpatory or neutral. The value of the prosecution depends upon the circumstances. This is, in, this is in accordance with the general law of evidence, and there is nothing in the Act which takes the explanation of plea out of this general clause. The aforementioned views was further confirmed in the matter between the Director of Public Prosecution versus Ben Maramba and others. In S. versus Henry, 1999, 1 SACR 13, SCA, Judge Scott held at 20 CI. It has been repeatedly emphasized in the past that defenses such as non-pathological automism require to be carefully scrutinized by the very nature of things. The only person who can give direct evidence as to the level of consciousness of an accused person at the time of the commission of the alleged criminal act is the accused himself. He's, it's predicted to the effect of his act was involuntarily and unconsciously committed, must therefore be weighed up and considered in the light of all the circumstances and particularly against the alleged criminal conduct viewed objectively. Ultimately, it is for the court to decide the true nature of the alleged criminal conduct, which it will do not only on the basis of the expert evidence, but in light of all the facts and circumstances in the case. It is further submitted, as stated above, that sufficient evidence have been presented and placed before this Honourable Court upon which a reasonable man court may convict. The State therefore submits that the application of Section 174 of the Criminal Procedure Act should be dismissed and the accused version of justification needs to be tested whether it is a valid defence acceptable to the court or not. Dated at Randburg on the 20th of 20th day of May, to you signed by myself, Your Worship. May I hand this copy to the court, which I signed, Your Worship? Court received, and we'll mark it as exhibit in. Thank you, Mr. Horace. Is there any further comment you want to make? None. Bishop, there just seems to be one uh, area with the exhibits. Do we have an exhibit L already, Bishop? It was the witness statement of Sergeant Muller, Becky Gilbert Ma 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 Mapisa, dated 2nd of December 2019. So in my head to become M, your worship, and my learned friends here to become M. 
I don't think your list is updated. Yours is pretty good. It's updated the list which I have with indicator last one was L. Yes, yours is L. The mine is M and my reference is N. M. Yes, as yours should be. So, what is the last exhibit? Can I just get clarity? to you? My, my heads of argument mm -hmm. would be M for Max. Mm -hmm. My learned friend's heads of argument would be N for Nelly. Yes. yes. So can I get the, the last exhibit, which was the statement of Mr. Mapisa? Yes. Is that marked as L or M? L, you yeah. L. Yes, you Thank you. Thank you. So then it is correct that your heads of arguments is to be marked as Exhibit M, mm. yes, and then the state will be uh, Exhibit N. As yes, you please. Indeed, Thank so you should confirm. Uh, I believe both parties do not have any further submissions with regards to the application. No, you will should. Uh, I am going to ask the two accused to be remain seated for purposes of the judgment itself. I see no reason why they should stand for the mere fact of the judgment in this regard. So you may be remain seated. I have also just wants to place on the record both parties, the court have received their heads of arguments timelessly. And Mr. Otis as well as Ms. Hart have read their heads of arguments into the record. With regards to the heads of arguments received by Mr. Otis in this regard, which is marked as Exhibit M, it was read into the record from pages 1 to 10, as well as the basically the whole heads of arguments will also refer to footnotes in this regard. The footnotes was not read into the record from page 1 to page 10. It is mostly also referring the court to numerous case laws and what has been indicated in that case law itself. From page 10 onwards, it is basically refer, make reference, the footnotes make reference to extent of the transcripts itself. So that forms also part of the transcript. Uh, it also forms part of the heads of arguments, which was duly taken into consideration by the court. The said exhibits is then marked and it is now signed by both parties and the court thank both parties for doing, uh, for handing the heads of arguments. The heads of arguments of Mr. Otis, exhibit M, consists mostly in the application and the crust of this application rests on the extent of credibility of the said witnesses who testified before court and then also with regards to unlawfulness and the intent. The state also then relied specifically on direct evidence to indicate to the court that the court should not grant this application because there is direct evidence with regards to the assault which is before court. And the state also further deals in the heads of arguments with real evidence and the record is stated as well as the heads of argument. It's common cause between state and the Defense that the court have received exhibit three, which is the video footage by consent of the parties, and have ruled that it is admissible before the court. So no further aspect with regards to referral of case law concerning such is to be dealt with. Also with regards to the discrepancies of the state witnesses, as well as the statements which is before court, which the court will then also deal with in that regard. With regards to non pathological Ultimatism, the court will also not comment on such because of the direct evidence which is before court, which will be assessed in this regard. Therefore, the two accused before court has been charged with an offence of assault. It has been alleged that upon the 14th day of April 2028, in it or near Four Ways Memorial Park in the district of Johannesburg North, the accused did unlawfully and intentionally assault Johannes Jacobus Venter by pushing him. The state further alleged that the two accused, at all material times, acted in the furtherance of common purpose. The two accused also pleaded not guilty and elected to disclose their defense in terms of Section 115 of Act 51 of 1977, the Criminal Procedure Act plea explanation. The grounds of justification, both accused believe that they were entitled to enter 
the cemetery for a burial ceremony. That the obstruction of them was illegal and unjustified. Subparagraph B, in the circumstance they lack mens rea because they believe at the very least that they were entitled to enter the cemetery for a burial service. Subparagraph C to paragraph 2. Further, that there is a political agenda here at play. This is an assault common case. They both reached out to the complainant by way of Ubuntu that was rejected by AgriForum. So this turned out to be that there is a political agenda between AgriForum and the EFF, which is being played out here in court. Paragraph 3. Therefore, in terms of Section 174 of Act 51 of 1977, accused may be discharged at close of the case for prosecution if at the close of the case for the prosecution at any trial the court is of the opinion that there is no evidence that the accused committed the offence of assault referred to in the charge sheet or any offence which they may be convicted on the said charge. It may return a verdict of not guilty. It, paragraph 4, it is common cause that the parties, as per the heads of arguments in the cited cases, the cited case law concerning the development and the history of an application in terms of Section 174 of Act 51 of 1977, the Criminal Procedure Act, subparagraph A, referred to by the defence in paragraph 2 to paragraph 25 of the defence's heads of arguments to paragraph 10 and others of the state's heads of arguments. However, when the court used the term others, it is because it is difficult to correctly identify the exact paragraphs of the state's heads of arguments since the numbering is incorrectly or vaguely used in this regard. The only real reference to the state's heads of arguments will be the pages, but it has become too complicated to refer. The following principles which is being dealt with in the heads of arguments of both parties is the following. Whether there is a prima facie case which has been proven by the state, no evidence, credibility, not to incriminate yourself. Paragraph 6, I am in agreement with all the reference and cited cases in the above mentioned principles in that the onus rests on the state to prove the allegation of assault on a prima facie basis and not beyond a reasonable doubt at this stage. Paragraph 7, the words no evidence have on numerous occasions been interpreted to mean no evidence upon which a reasonable man acting carefully may convict. Paragraph 8, I agree that the court may also act mere motto and should do so where the accused is unrepresented. The case of Zimmerich, 1989, Volume 3, SA 184, in brackets C, as well as the case of America, 1999, Volume 2, SACR 480, in brackets C, whereas the decision to refuse or grant a discharge is a matter solely rested within the discretion of the presiding officer, in such this discretion must be exercised judicially. Paragraph 9. It has been held that credibility was not a matter that should be taken into account when considering a discharge, as it was a matter to be considered at the appropriate time. The second case of Gladler, 1961, Volume 3, SA 921, in brackets D, as well as the case of National Board of Executives, LTD, 1971, Volume 3, SA 817, in brackets D. However, credibility was considered a relevant factor in the case of Nanda Gopal Naidu, 1966, Volume 1, PH H104 in brackets W, as well as the case of Norki, 1961, Volume 2, PH166 in brackets O. Also in the case of Power, 1964, Volume 3, SA800 in brackets 0 
as well as in the case of S versus Mpeta, 1983, Volume 4, SA, 262C, at page 265, paragraphs D to G, as well as in the case of S versus Swart, 2002, Volume 1, SACR, 334, in brackets WLD, at page 335, paragraphs E to F. However, in the case of Mpeta, it was indicated after analyzing the various decisions, Judge, Willi Judge Williamson stated, however, it must be remembered that it is only a very limited role that can be played by credibility. At this stage of the proceedings, if a witness gives evidence which is relevant to the charge being considered by the court, then that evidence can only be ignored if it is of such poor quality that no reasonable person could possibly accept it. This would really only be in the most exceptional cases where the credibility of a witness is so utterly destroyed that no part of his material evidence can possibly be believed. Before credibility play a role at all, it is a very high degree of untrustworthiness that has to be shown. It must be overlooked that the trials of fact are entitled while rejecting one portion of the sworn testimony of a witness to accept another portion. Case of R versus Kumalo, 1916 AD 480 at page 484. Any lesser test than the very high one, which in my judgment is demanded, would run counter to both principles and requirements of section 174. Does credibility play only a very limited role? And evidence could be ignored only if it was of such poor quality that no reasonable person could possibly accept it. In the case of S versus Swartz, 2002, volume one, SACR, 334, in brackets, W. It was stated that when assessing the quality of evidence, this was not done in a vacuum. Credibility of a witness in an application for discharge was one of the features to which a court could have regard. In causa, the court found the quality of the state witness to be of such poor quality that no reasonable man acting carefully could convict thereon. The case of Zuma, 2006, volume two, SACR 191, in brackets W. When dealing with an application for discharge of an accused at a closure for the state's case, the judge remarked as follows. The complainant's evidence, as stated in the short judgment, was not so broken down that it could not be, the, the court will just repeat the sentence. The complainant's evidence, as stated in the short judgment, was not so broken down that it could be disregarded. In the case of Lubaxa, 2001, Volume 2, SACR, 40, SACR 703, in brackets, CHA. The judge indicated as follows regarding Section 174. Section 174 of the Act repeats all material respects and respects the terms of its predecessor in the 1917 and 1955 Criminal Code. It permits a trial court to return a verdict of not guilty at the close of the case for the prosecution if the court is of the opinion that there is no Evidence, meaning evidence upon which a reasonable person might convict. The case of S. versus Kanyapa, 1979, Volume 1, SA 824, in brackets A, at page 838, paragraph F to G. That the accused committed the offense with which he is charged, or an offense which is a competent verdict on that charge, if in the opinion of the trial court there is evidence upon which an accused might reasonably be convicted, its duty is straightforward. The accused may not be discharged and the trial must continue to its end. It is when the trial court is of the opinion that there is no evidence upon which the accused might reasonably be convicted that the difficulty arrives. The section purports then to give the trial court the discretion it may return a verdict of not guilty and discharge the accused there and then. 
or it may refuse to discharge the accused, thereby placing him on his defense. Now, the case of S versus Duwani has been referred to by state as well as the defense. Citation is also on the set papers of both parties as well. It summarized the legal position regarding the application in terms of section 174, an accused person is entitled to discharge at the close of the case of the prosecution if there is no possibility of a conviction other than if he enters the witness box and incriminate himself. In deciding whether the accused person is entitled to be discharged at the close of the state's case, the court may take into account the credibility of the state witnesses, even if only to a limited extent, where the evidence of the state witness implicate the accused is of such poor quality that it cannot safely rely upon, and there is accordingly no credible evidence on record upon which the court acting carefully may convict the application for discharge should be granted. So the court should, in our current constitutional dispensation, always prevent that an accused is placed on his defense in the event that there is no evidence upon which a reasonable court acting judicially may convict on. I therefore have no doubt in that the accused person, whether or not he is represented, is entitled to be discharged at the close of the case for the prosecution if there is no possibility of convicting other than if he enters the witness box and incriminate himself. The failure to discharge an accused in those circumstances, if necessary, Meromoto, is in my view a breach of the rights that are guaranteed in the Constitution and will ordinarily vitiate a conviction based exclusively upon self-incriminatory evidence. Paragraph 12. So in light of the above, it is also important to look at the charge which the accused has pleaded to. Subparagraph A, the author Milton at 406 defines assault as follows. Assault consists unlawfully and intentionally applying force to the person of another or inspiring a belief that force is immediately to be applied to him. Subparagraph B, assault to define by the author Sneiman at page 430 as follows. Assault consists, consists in unlawful and intentionally applying force directly or indirectly to the person inspiring a belief in another, inspiring a belief in another person. The elements would then mostly consist out of X, unlawfulness and intention. Subparagraph A, the act itself. The element manifests itself in one of two ways, namely through the application of violence and through threats of violence. Subparagraph B, unlawfulness, the legal conviction of the Community requires that the physical integrity of a person should be protected. This, however, does not mean that every impairment of the said physical integrity will constitute unlawfulness. The impairment of the physical integrity of a person will be unlawful when according to the objective, objective reasonableness criterion is it is unreasonable. Then subparagraph C, intention. The perpetrator must have the intention to apply force or violence to another person. In this regard, we may see the case of uh, Rebo, 2007, volume two, SACR 292, in brackets ECD. In this regard, or to threaten him in such a way that a belief or fear is inspiring in the mind of the letter with the above mentioned qualification. Paragraph 14. Now I am mindful, as per the defense, heads of arguments, paragraph 26 to paragraph 44, which deals with the summary of the state's evidence and the reference to credibility of the witness, specifically the complainant. Likewise, the state's heads of arguments dealing with the same principles, but as I've it earlier indicated direct reference would be confusing as per the numbering of the state's heads of arguments. But I assure the state that I have applied my mind to all the submissions surrounding these issues. 
paragraph 15. Before I reach conclusion, I like to refer to the case of S versus Manakwane, 1996, volume 2, SACR 264, in brackets EC at, para at page 267, paragraph J, J where Judge uh, Nugent stated that it is wrong to attempt to be, prescrip be prescriptive as to when exactly and under what circumstances this discretion should be exercised in favor of the accused. Whether the discretion will be exercised will depend on the facts of each particular case. The presumption in combination of the circumstances which can arise in practice are virtually infinite, as are the nuances, and it could be foolish to try to compile a comprehensive list of factors, let alone list them in order of importance for the same reason it is unwise to place too much stress on what Judge A had occasion to say in case A about the factors or the measures which had to enjoy priority in that case. Decision to allow or refuse a discharge is a judgment tried to the facts whereby the entire spectrum of circumstances plays a role. It is therefore respectfully submitted that even cases at the extreme of the spectrum, such as Moore, Kritzinger, Herald, Hector, Chopin, and many more, each assess in the context of its own particular set of facts and are not totally irreconcilable. Judicial remarks on factual issues, irrespective of the universal nature of the language used to express them, on, are not principle, even less do they constitute binding precedents. At best, they are useful analogous indicators of what was done in comparable cases. Paragraph 16. Now, therefore, the court will specifically look at whether the evidence of the state has the possibility of a conviction on the arranged charge. The state has called six witnesses, namely Colonel Johannes Jacobus Fenter, Dion Klingbal, James, Colonel James Bronkos, Colonel Charles Cianejo, Warrant Officer Jacobus Nicholas Postlow Smith and Staff Sergeant Gilbert Mapisa. In addition to the oral evidence, the court has received the following documentary as well as real evidence. Uh, under paragraph 17a, sub a, exhibit 1 to 2 is photograph, photograph parking spaces, b, exhibit 3, video evidence, exhibit Four, under paragraph, subparagraph C, photo album compiled by Mr. Smith. Subparagraph D, exhibit A, funeral program of the late Winnie Mandela. Under paragraph E, exhibit B to L is witness statements. Therefore, the court have reached the following conclusion under paragraph 18. Now it goes without overemphasizing the fact that the state's case has discrepancies specifically with regard or reference to the complainant's, Mr. Fenter's evidence and Staff Sergeant Mapisa's evidence, which is relevant to the charge of assault. The other witness evidence don't relate to the assault directly, but indirectly only towards the real evidence. These witnesses' evidence is to be viewed as formal and relate to the video mostly in investigation in what investigations was done. At the stage I found, at this stage I found that the evidence not to be relevant for the application before court due to the video being allowed by consent and is admissible as evidence before the court. Therefore, when I look at the direct evidence in regard to the assault, I agree that Mr. Fenter's evidence when challenged, when challenged whether the accused may enter the cemetery where their vehicle went from, as referred to by the defense, nobody other than the family and the president, as well as the deputy president, were allowed to enter in vehicles. Only accredited vehicles 
with permits could enter. The accused vehicle had not being part of the convoy. The accused vehicle had no escort. Even if the vehicle had a permit, he would not allow it to enter. He contacted the venue operation center to get permission to allow the vehicle in. General Zulu gave or didn't give permission. On the question of General Zulu, I was addressed by both parties also with regards to General Zulu. General Zulu never gave evidence before the court and the court cannot place any weight with regards to what was said. So anything referred to General Zulu is not before the court and cannot be taken into account. The evidence by the state witnesses of whether the accused was allowed then to go into the cemetery with the vehicle is not clear, nor convincing in any manner. One cannot take the oral evidence in isolation of the written statements or the witnesses. It does not speak with one voice. It creates different scenarios and has an effect on credibility to what the court must accept as the correct version. Even in light of these discrepancies, the court must specifically look at the following as well. Facta provanda, facts in issue, are those facts that the party must prove to succeed in a case. The facts in issue are generally speaking determined by the substantive law as for example, the elements of an offense determined by the substantial criminal law under paragraph, subparagraph B, facta provantia, facts relevant to the facts in issue are those facts that tend to prove or disprove, rebut, the facts in issue and from which inferences may be drawn about the facts in issue. Facts, re facts relevant to the facts in issue are, generally speaking, determined by the rules of procedure, formal law, such as, for example, criminal procedure and in particular the law of evidence. Under paragraph C, examples of facts in issue and facts relevant to the facts in issue on the charge of assault effects in issue will be application of force, unlawfulness, intent, intention. Examples of facts relevant to the facts in issue will be evidence that the accused did not act in private defense or that there was an imminent danger of being attacked by complainant as well as justification. Paragraph 20. Now it is clear from exhibit three that the accused vehicle is the last one to arrive and being stopped by Colonel Fenter. It further, it's further clear on the video that both accused has been seen pushing Colonel Fenter to the extent that he nearly fell against the, guard, the guard's house. This basically happened in mere seconds. Even though that there were that their vehicle was the last vehicle after the two BMW SUVs X5s with blue lights to support Colonel Fenter's version, it still remains unclear of what should be the first and last vehicle to enter the cemetery. On the video, there is a marked vehicle, vehicles with blue lights on and also unmarked cars as indicated by the witness that other cars or other vehicles was rented and would therefore not be marked at all. No list given to him of all vehicles that should enter. On the version of Colonel Fenter of how the convoy was compiled, kept on changing as mentioned above. Therefore, it is highly debatable on how these operations was deployed for the safety of the president ministers, deputy president, as well as heads and ex-heads of states, specifically if you were stopped and have no right to enter, but later also have entered. This then, in return, will defeat the whole purpose of regulating entry with safety in mind. Also take into account that plus minus four years have passed, and until present, it is still not equivocally clear that the accused had the right to enter or not with his vehicle. 
the issue was also attempted to be rectified, which is then referenced to multiple statements do being done by Colonel Fenter without success. Further, these discrepancies go to the trust of entry into the cemetery and not directly to the definitional elements of the offense of assault. I will therefore refrain from making a credibility finding at this stage as the quoted authorities by the defense and the state is clear that credibility only plays a limited role in this, at this stage. Unless his credibility as a witness was so utterly destroyed that no part of his material evidence can possibly be believed. The material part of his evidence with reference to Exhibit 3 stand and it is prima facie proof of assault. When dealing with the accuser's right to enter, one should also take into account the following, the definitional, the definitional elements of the offense of assault. Firstly, dealing with conduct, it is common cause between the state and the defense that assault may be committed by the slightest contact of the body of the complainant, as per illustration on, ele on Exhibit 3. For an example, the courts have held that X commits assault merely by walking to Y and knock Y's head from his head. In this regard, we may refer to the cases of Herbert, 10 CRT 516. In Herbert, the accused removed the complainant's head from his head. And in Huerson and Lamini, the accused took a woman by the arm and said, Hello, my sweetheart. Also in R versus Van Vieren, 1961, volume 3, SA 305 in brackets E. So the slightest touch of a human, of the body of another person but the intent could be considered as an assault. This leads us to the aspect of the dispute between the state and the defense, whether an accused has acted in a form of justification which will exclude unlawfulness or unlawfully and intentionally. The court will just repeat paragraph 22. This leads us to the aspect of the dispute between the state and the defense, whether an accused has acted in a form of justification which will exclude unlawful and in intention to commit the offense of assault. I'm aware that a person act in private defense in protection of his life or bodily integrity. But in principle, there is no reason not to accept that a person may act in private defense or protect other legal interests. The court have accordingly recognized private defense in protection of property, dignity, freedom of movement, also prevent prevention from unlawful arrest, and so forth. With a reference to the cases of S versus Chingaza, in brackets, this is the actual case number, case stroke S, 15 stroke 2011, which is a Northern Cape High Court, which was decided in Kimberley. Also the case of S versus Mona, Volume 1, SACR, 4 to 6, in brackets, TK. In this case, the court dealt with the application of discharge of an accused in terms of Section 174 or the Criminal Procedure Act. In my view, the principles enunciated in this decision is opposed, opposite. Appeal Judge Krieger, who was confronted with, a, with almost similar situation, make the following remarks. Uh, paragraph, subparagraph A, an assault and the killing of a human being is an action which is prima facie unlawful. Once it becomes common cause that an accused has assaulted or killed the deceased or victim in self-defense, an evidential burden is placed on the accused to rebut the prima facie presumption of unlawfulness. In such case, a discharge under Section 174 cannot be granted. Therefore, I found that therefore I found that there is common cause between the state and the defense in terms of Exhibit 3. It is admitted by consent in the court rule that it is also admissible as evidence before the court. Reference also with transcript to 
or 28 October 2020, pages 82 and 84. Real evidence consists of things which are examined by the court as means of proof upon proper identification and it becomes of itself evidence as what was said in the case of S versus Matembu. 2008, Volume 2, SACR, 411, in brackets, SCA, at paragraph 31. Real evidence usually bears the hallmark of objective reality, unlike narrative testimony. That depends on the say-so of a witness. What is then seen on a video is clearly or prima facie proof of an assault on the complainant. Mr. Fenter's evidence is also clear that he maintained that he was assaulted by the actions of both accused. The justification of the assault, which is in dispute, must be tested. Furthermore, ignorance or mistake of law, every man must be taken to the cognizant of the law. Otherwise, there is no knowing of the extent to which the excuse of ignorance might be carried. It would be argued in almost every case. Paragraph 24, it stands to reason that the application, therefore, in terms of section 174 of both of you, is therefore then dismissed. The accused already used to testify. Beg your pardon? The accused already to testify. Yes. Are ready to testify. I believe we did not have tea. We have proceeded into tea. I do not have an objection to proceed immediately or do we wait for 15 minutes and to be back at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Understand? Court will adjourn for 15 minutes. We will resume with the matter at uh, 4 o'clock. Court adjourn. All right.
I'm so in the
Okay. 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 Okay.
have to stop this. Hmm? It's just running. Mama.
And remember when you did slow motion, you're pressing it. <coughs> okay. One yes. Remember, I don't compromise going to mosque. You know that. So, but if there's a problem, call me, I can help you get some. Okay. 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 I'm waiting for you guys. Go, you want to go to the bathroom? Go. Go No, I, I, I'll take longer. So what? No, I'll At 12.
Yes, she's coming. Are you guys fine? Okay, I'll just see my offer. If you need me, just send one message. I'll take my phone right next to me.
Okay, let him finish. You can ask, you can ask. Ah, okay. she can finish now. Is she is there alone? Let him finish. No, you're still going to be busy. So by then I must finish. Only when he's done, he's going to take the book. It's fine. If he's going to take the church with him, I'll get the book when they are done that side. Okay.
Be seated. Just one moment, Mr. Witters. In the interim, we may be. Thank you. It's case number. It's case number three, stroke four zero. 67 stroke 2019, the appearance of said resumption is as before. Thank you, Mr. Otis. Thank you, Mr. Call accused number one, Mr. Melimba, to testify. Mr. Lozzi, may be seated. Thank you, sir. Can you indicate to the court? Thank you, sir. Can you indicate to the court your full names and surname? Julius Sello Malema. Mr. Malema, do you have any objection taking the prescribed oath? No. Do you consider the prescribed oath to be binding on your conscience? Yes. Raise right hand and repeat after me. I swear that the evidence that you are about to give will be the whole truth, nothing else except the truth, so help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Mr. Otis, your witness. Thank you. Can I please take off my... Yes, you may do so. Please. I'm not sure. Are you comfortable standing? Uh, I will indicate when I get tired. It is in order, Mr. Malema. Thank you. Mr. Odish, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Malema, you are an accused arising out of an incident that took place on the four <coughs> 14th of April 2018. Can you please, going slowly, watching His Worship's pen, take us through your, your movements on the day of the 14th of April 2018? Perhaps uh, I will start a bit uh, before that day when sure. Mama uh, passed away. Um, we went to visit her house. And uh, when we arrived there, we sent our condolences to the family. And the family said I was taken outside by both the late Zinzi and the Ambassador Zenani, the two daughters of Mama Winnie, that they would like me to give a speech on the day of a burial, and that they don't want me to speak on the memorial, I must speak on the actual day, that both the state and the ANC are refusing that I speak that they do not want me to speak there, and uh, they say it's a state funeral. Can you just repeat, it's about the state? Both the state and, and the, the ANC, ANC. Thank uh, you. do not want me to speak there because it's a state funeral, and that in the state funeral ordinarily it will be president, a family, and ministers who speak. And they told me that they've made it very clear to the ANC and to the state that um, he is going to speak. And if you insist that he should not speak, we are going to decline the state funeral. And then we'll bury her on our own because we must bury her according to a wish. I do not get surprised with what is happening today because it, it occurred way before she passed away. Now, on the day in question, uh, which is very, very difficult for me, because standing here requires me to relive the painful day of burial of our mother. 
it will mean for me today that I'm burying her for the second time because I have to relive that painful day through my testimony. On the day in question, uh, my security came in the morning to take the vehicles to a road lodge at uh, Grayston where there will be sweeping of vehicles which are going to the stadium. When you say a, a road lodge, you mean the city lodge? It's a no, hotel. Road, lodge. road lodge. Road lodge. I should indicate <coughs> that um, it was very few vehicles were allowed at the stadium. Even ministers' vehicles were not allowed at the stadium. Only those ministers who were in the preparatory committee were allowed to come uh, with vehicles to the stadium. There was a shuttle service provided on that day where ministers will park and guide into buses. But my vehicle was uh, uh, swept that day by the security and then allowed to proceed with the uh, escort of the Metro Police to the stadium. When you refer to your vehicle, what type of motor vehicle was it? Uh, Viano, the black Viano Mercedes-Benz. Um, when we arrived at the stadium, we did not park at the parking. We parked at the basement where the presidents and former presidents and head of states were parking. And the program proceeded, and uh, after that, it was announced that very few people will go to the cemetery, and uh, the rest of the mourners should remain at the stadium, and uh, those accredited should go to the cemetery. I was standing with Minister Mbalula that day when my car came to pick me up. Just uh, uh, we, we walked outside the stadium and my car came from the basement to pick me up. And he was shocked that my car was allowed because they were made to park somewhere <coughs> as ministers and go into buses. I'm making this point to demonstrate how the vehicle in question has had access to where nobody had access. We drove to when the you cemetery. say we drove, who was with you in the vehicle? It was uh, me and Mr. Ndlozi. Accused and number two. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, and the, the two protectors. So in total, how many people were in the vehicle? Four. Okay. Now, um, it was so tight, the security was so tight so much that no one could actually join the convoy <laughs> if you're not accredited. Your worship, when we joined the freeway, um, the, the off-ramps and the on-ramps were all blocked. And the on-ramp that we came from, from Orlando Stadium, where the N1 starts from that on-ramp, that blocked it. No car coming from the other side of that on-ramp will pass that on-ramp only the cars of the funeral were allowed on that day. Now, amongst that convoy, were there any motorcyclists? There were motorcyclists, there were metro police, uh, there were all types of uh, law enforcement uh, on the day. I think uh, I had just asked one of our colleagues to go and print just a sim uh, example, a picture of uh, the uh, freeway that day where uh, the presidential convoy and all of the convoy, it was, it was only those types of vehicles on the freeway on that day. So um, we proceeded. We never had any problem. And uh, we arrived at the entrance of the cemetery and were blocked by Colonel Fenter. It is incorrect for 
the other witness to say he blocked us before because we're never blocked by anyone. Even in my original statement, I make mention of Econolan Fenter blocking us. Uh, why would I have missed that one? I didn't know he was going to be a state witness. I had nothing against him. I would have mentioned that we were actually blocked first by this person and then second by Fenter. We're never blocked by anyone. We're blocked by Fenter. Now, at and the time when you were blocked by the complainant, where were you seated in the vehicle? I was at the back. Now, Fender blocked us. <coughs> then he spoke to our driver. Our driver showed Fender the permit of the car and showed Fender uh, his accreditation, the individual accreditation. Fenter asked our driver a question. Who are you driving? He said, Mr. Malema. I think that's where the problem started. Because he said, no, you are not allowed. Now, my worship, if the truth is being told, we live this life every day. It's our <coughs> job. If the vehicle is not allowed, and only individuals are allowed, Fenter would have said, drop off here and take the car to park on the other side. It's our life. We do that on a daily basis, where we are told the car will not go in, drop off here, take the car back. No. Only to arrive in this court and hear that my car was a problem. But all along, I lived under the impression that I was a problem who was not allowed to attend that funeral. My car was never questioned on that day. No one ever had an issue with my car. After they told him, and he said, no, this car will not go in, I then got out because I thought if he recognizes me, he will change his attitude. When I got out, he did the craziest thing I've never seen in a police uh, personnel. He blocked the car with his body and stretched his hands like this. He was blocking the car like, and I was like, why are you being dramatic? What is the problem? And he started speaking in Africans. And that's when I started being agitated. Your worship, it was a difficult day for me. It was an emotional day for me. Any attempt to stop me from burying my mother will be a humiliation and violation of my dignity as an individual. I was not going to reason with anyone who would want to stop me from uh, burying uh, my mother. I did everything to bury this woman in a dignified manner. I lived with her. I defended her when they all turned against her. And I was not going to allow a situation where I'm denied the right to say my last uh, goodbyes. If they had said to me, your car is not allowed, uh, get out of your car and go walk into the cemetery, I would have done that as long as I can just get an opportunity to bury my mother. But when I was denied, despite displaying accreditation, despite being known who's very close to this person we're bearing today, I still get treated in a manner uh, Fender did. Now, we are now pushed. There were uh, guys who came, and those were, uh, what do you call, the passerbys, who said, hey, what are you doing? What? And then they started pushing him. You don't know this guy. You don't know this guy. They started pushing him. Then I went into the driver's seat because I said to the driver, look, if you are scared to drive, let me drive this car. It's my car. As I was trying to uh, uh, drive the car, then uh, Fender continued with his uh, shenanigans. I then went back and then I pushed him. I said, you need to leave my car. Your worship, the question should arise. If a police officer is being pushed, executing his duties, rightfully so, 
The first thing a police officer does is to call for a backup. Fenter call for a backup. No way does anyone argue that Fenter called for a backup because he was under attack. If anything, he was acting on his own out of his hatred of some of us, maybe because later it came out that he's an Afri Forum member, an Afri Forum which is an enemy of my organization. So we pushed him and then we came in with the vehicle and everything proceeded so well. Now, let's converse this one, Your Worship. If the car is not allowed to be there, under no circumstances, particularly in the presence of the president, former heads of state, and heads of state, will that car have access? It will never go in. Because what is the point of taking these cars through screening if there is a car that can just bully itself into uh, the occasion? It's a security risk, and it's a high security risk. Let's say we succeeded to push our way at the entrance. I can guarantee you, Your Worship, we're going to be fetched from our inside that this car does not belong here. You must live with this car with immediate effect. It's a fenders attitude. It's not police operation. Police operate in a particular way. And one of such ways is no car which is not accredited in an occasion like that can have access into the cemetery and there is no follow-up to go and impound it. And what is even worse, Your Worship, is that in such occasions, you will have a tow truck where if a car parks at the wrong place and they can't locate the driver, they tow it. If a car goes inside and uh, the owner is cheeky and not compliant, they will tow it. Nowhere, Your Worship, are you told of this car being towed? Are you told of this car being impounded? Are you told of police reinforcement to come and deal with these unruly elements? It's only one man in such a big occasion where he acts on his own volition without following what are the prerequisites of a person who must mend such an occasion? Mr. Malema, up and above the car. I've got a bit of flu. Can I have a... Up and through above. you, Yoshi. Yes, you may. Yes. <coughs> up and Can above the car, if we sketch the scenario that you've now depicted for this court, had you, in the minds of all of those officers, police officers, and all other corps, assaulted a colonel in front of all of them ordinarily, what do you believe ought to have happened to you? I didn't hear that. Had you, in the minds of all the officers that were present, including high-ranking police officers, members of the military, if you had, us, in their mind, assaulted the complainant in front of them, what do you believe would have happened to you? We would have been uh, arrested immediately on the scene. There would have been enough police presence to show us that you don't dare undermine the police proceedings because on such occasions, your, your worship, police take over. Once they say it's a state funeral, both the army and the police are in charge, and therefore no one will dare undermine such authority. I want your hand to exhibit A before this court. Can you identify this document, please? Hmm. What, what is that? A uh, special official funeral service for Winnie Madigzela Mandela, Saturday, 14 April 2018, 26 September 1936 to 2nd April 2018, <coughs> with Mama's picture. Now, I believe it's common cause that that was the official program of the day. And you'll see there that you feature as item 17. Do you identify yourself as being representing item 17?
Yes. What did that entail? What, what were you required to do? Uh, I was expected to pay a tribute to uh, Mama Mandela. So if anybody said that you didn't belong at this funeral, shouldn't have been at the cemetery, what is your response? That is unthinkable because uh, even if I was not on the program, there are, so, there are um, a lot of uh, Winnie's uh, relatives, uh, there are Winnie's grandchildren, were not on the program. But there is no way you can think they will not be at the burial site. It is unthinkable. Now, in the docket, there was a statement by the late Ambassador Zinzi Mandela. I'm going to read it to you for your comment. It was A24, it's Exhibit E in this Honorable Court. It's a statement by Ambassador Zinzi Mandela. I, the undersigned Zinzi Mandela, with identity number, wish to state as follows. I'm an adult female South African citizen at present serving as the South African Ambassador to Denmark. I'm the daughter of the late Nomzama, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, and the late Nelson Radichlachla Mandela. Both my parents were renowned and internationally acclaimed political leaders who played a significant role in the struggle for the liberation of South Africa from the yoke of apartheid. My father died on 5 December 2013. More significantly relative to this statement, my mother died on 2 April 2018 and was buried at an official funeral on 14 April 2018. I was shocked to learn recently that Mr. Julius Malema was on the verge of being criminally charged for being involved in a scuffle with Lieutenant Colonel Fenton of the South African Police Service at the gate of the four-way cemetery on the date of my mother's funeral. I was even more appalled on the day in question when I was told that some members of the South African Security Forces who were on official duty at my mother's funeral had attempted to prevent Mr. Malema from entering the cemetery to pay his last respects to my mother, who literally raised him and regarded him as a, her own biological child and son. This is the fact that is or should have been known to any person who regards themselves as South African. In any event, any security briefing preceding the funeral ought to have been identified as the most obvious members of the Mandela family, including our extended family. It was no coincidence that Mr. Malema was one of the key speakers at my mother's funeral, Despite some political resistance, the Mandela family had insisted that Mr. Malema be part of the program. Without him, the funeral would have been incomplete or carried out against the wishes of the person being buried. Again, any member of the security forces ought to have been briefed about to be in possession of the program. To prevent Mr. Malema from entering the cemetery would have created the most serious violation of the specific wishes of the Mandela family. To prevent a son from burying his own mother in the name of the law is an unthinkable act of provocation. There was in any event no justification for attempting to block Mr. Malema from entering the graveyard. More importantly, I wish to appeal to the humanity of those who will take the decision whether to charge or not charge Mr. Malema for his role in the scuffle which took place in those special circumstances. I also wish to appeal to the decision makers' compassion and empathy. The re at the relevant time, those of us who were the closest to the deceased could not reasonably have been expected to behave as our normal selves. Understandably, we were not ourselves. We were caught up in a bizarre and unprecedented moment. An armchair approach after the fact cannot even begin to appreciate the uniqueness of that moment. I myself would have reacted far worse if any person had prevented me from paying my last respects to my deceased parent. It would have been culturally incongruent and morally indefensible. Laws cannot be applied mechanically as if we are not dealing with human beings who suffer loss in different ways. This is an incident from which all those involved should walk away with their dignity intact. The purpose of this statement is to express in the strongest possible terms that Mr. Julius Malema cannot be justifiably prosecuted for that, we would all have, for that which we all would all have done if not worse under the circumstances. I therefore plead that the decision to prosecute ought not to be taken Failing this, the Mandela family will have no option but to doubt, doubt if the security forces had the interests of the grieving family at heart. <coughs> to charge Mr. Malema can only serve to exacerbate the pain and sense of loss which we still feel and will represent the heart of insensitivity and absence of Ubuntu that makes us human. As a family, we would support any alternative solution which does not involve the criminal justice system, including attending a meeting with the alleged victim so that we can explain the deep human and cultural issues involved in this matter, which cannot be treated as a routine case of assault. For any further clarity on the above, I can be contacted at the following email address, and it's applied. 
We pray that sanity and common sense will prevail in the handling of this matter. And it's signed by Zinzi Mandela on 14 September 2019 in Copenhagen, Denmark. Do you have any comments on that statement, sir? Well, I agree entirely with that statement. And that uh, your worship uh, should note that in the spirit of that statement, we also tried to approach the complainant because we are not boastful about <coughs> what happened. If anything, our mother's funeral was supposed to proceed incident-free. And uh, when this came to the fore, we thought the best thing would be to approach uh, uh, the complainant and uh, we find the Ubuntu solution to this problem, which the court should encourage that um, instead of preoccupying the court on matters that could easily be resolved amongst individuals, particularly matters like uh, common assault, uh, we should all be encouraged to do Ubuntu uh, it, approach. It was admitted by the complainant that he never attended that meeting. Um, he sent every forum to attend that, that meeting. Do you have any comments on that, sir? Well, uh, that's how political it becomes. Uh, because Afro Forum has made its business to go after me and go after the EFF. So I'm, I'm not shocked that uh, uh, they actually uh, denied him to do the right thing except Afro Forum being Mandela's fans. They are fans of Mandela when it suits them. But when it doesn't suit them, they are not fans of Mandela. Just one moment. Just one moment, sorry to interject, Mr. Ellis. The court just wants to remind you the pandemic is still being regulated by the Health, the health Act. And I now see everybody is realizing that they do not wear their mask over their nose. Advocate Hodes, as well as Mr. Malema, doesn't have a mask on because it is necessary for them to lead evidence in this regard. And Mr. Malema have clearly requested the court to do so. Members of the gallery have not requested the court to remove their masks. So, inspectors, I am requesting you to look specifically at the people should wear their mask at all time whilst they are inside of the building. If they do not wear their mask, they are free to leave and then they can remove their mask at their own wish. But whilst this proceedings is continuing, the court is expecting everybody to wear their mask. Sorry for the interjection. And the court do not want to repeat this in future again. I Sorry, appreciate it. Thank you. May you proceed. Mm -hmm. yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Now, sir, I want to turn to the time that you're leaving the stadium. You have said that there was a cavalcade or a convoy of motorcyclists with the vehicles. Is there a video presentation of that that you've seen anywhere? No. But also, your worship is that. Um, I hear uh, the people saying our vehicle was the last one. It's not true. Because our vehicle, if it was the last one, then there will be um, the last uh, uh, police vehicle, either Metro Police or the bikes or anything like that. So there is a lead in front and there is a car which blocks uh, people from joining the, the convoy. So. <coughs> Uh, it, our car was not the last one. Now we see the video, and um, you will notice immediately there are no motorbikes on, or motorcyclists on the video. Do you know where they were at that stage? Uh, the first ones would have entered, and the, the last ones are still coming. Uh, so that's why you can't see them immediately after our vehicle. Uh, if, the, I beg your pardon, if the video had started earlier and ran for longer, would you have seen that? Well, they should be able to show us. It should be able to show us. Um, and, and, and equally, I don't understand this thing of uh, uh, bringing cut and paste. Because uh, for us, uh, and uh, for the worship to arrive at a determination, he needs to have a total picture. Uh, and this is not a total picture. It's, a, it's part of the picture, yes. The fact that it's not being disputed it doesn't mean it's a total picture. Uh, uh, we have accepted it to be uh, accepted as evidence because it's part of what transpired, but it's not a total picture. 
and therefore any judgment that relies on this video, <coughs> it will not be relying on the total picture of what transpired on that day. So when you say it's part of what you mean is that it's a portion of the proceedings. Absolutely. Not, thank you. I'm going to turn to the video now and play it for you. Starting at the beginning, it's, it's an exhibit before this court. And then I'm going to ask you for your comments as we, as we proceed. Now, you see cars driving in. Do you, do you recognize that as the is, entrance? Is this way it's starting? Yes. Yeah, you see, that does an, that's extreme distortion. Because um, I don't know if they brought the picture, uh, Lawrence. In, 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 the, in, the, in the front of the convoy, let's leave us because we, someone is trying to prove that we uh, infiltrated the convoy. <coughs> the first picture we must see here is of the motorbikes and the president's vehicles. So anything that starts with an unidentifiable uh, C200 Mercedes-Benz is nothing close to what the president drives. So we see these unmarked vehicles yes. driving in. Do you agree? Yes. The time that's given is at the top left. It's the 14th of April 2018 being a Saturday at 15.15 being the, t the, the hours and the minutes and 25 seconds. A big one, 15.45, thank you. I was corrected by my learned friend, and, and she is correct, my Lord, my, my, your worship. So I'm going to proceed. So you see these unmarked vehicles entering. There's a Mercedes, and now there appears to be a, a Volkswagen. Do you agree with that? If you have noticed, they don't have blue lights also. Now, can those vehicles be described as being part of the president or the family of the deceased? No, but not only that. Look at the distance between that vehicle and the next vehicle that is going to follow. So, someone else I saw during the trial will say, no, the distance in between shows that this car has gone in uh, for some minutes before this car uh, came in. No, look at the distance in between. It's not bumper to bumper. So to create an impression that convoy means bumper to bumper is uh, misinformed. There it goes for a very long time without any car coming. Then impression is, no, it has to be bumper to bumper. It must have blue lights, and there must be sort of identity, which you can't see from those vehicles that we just uh, watched now. This is camera 11. It's already inside the gate. Here comes the BMW X5. Uh -huh. and another one. So you see these ones. They are likely to be driving together. Mm -hmm. So that one, first one, might be the main car. And the one close to the bumper might be a bike up. That's why they've got blue lights. But now you've seen, as you pointed out, the gap between that Volkswagen yes. and these BMWs. Can anybody, oh, I want to ask you, was that Volkswagen part of this convoy and, 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 and granted entry to the, to the memorial place? It was. It was. The, the, uh, uh, the being part of the convoy is not determined by uh, blue lights and then uh, entering uh, seconds after each other. It's incorrect. And thus far for the record on this video, have you seen any motorcyclists? No. Okay, I'm going to proceed. And the likelihood why you don't see the motorcyclist, this is the body of the convoy. There is a head and a tail. That's where you get more, uh, uh, the, the escorting uh, cars. Now you these two X5s, you saw blue lights. Do you see any other depiction that they've been authorized to enter? Any no. signs on them or permits or anything visible on the video? Right, so continue. <clears throat> so 
This is camera 11. There's another camera of outside of the gate. This is inside okay. of the gate. But again, have you noticed the, day, the time that ex-wife has been standing there and no other car coming immediately after it? Because the impression here created is that for you to be convoy, you have to be bumper to bumper. And I said those two are bumper to bumper because the other one is the main car, the other one is a backup. Just for the record, whilst you're watching the whole uh, group of people in uniforms on, uh, visible on the video, do you yeah. me? Yes. Now you see there, at the beginning of the incident, the red umbrella do, with the EFF insignia. Do you identify it? Yeah, I see the red. I don't see EFF emblem. Do you identify yourself there? Yeah. In the queue number two? Yes. And what, what are you doing there? I was pushing Fender. Why? To move in front of my car so that my car can go in. Because he had no justifiable legal reason why he stopped my car. And the car, what, what was the car doing while that was happening? Huh? What, the car is driving in. And is anybody else no one is blogging it. From entering. No one is blogging it. And there is uh, too much uh, police presence there and other law enforcement officers. Why is Fender giving himself the sole responsibility of stopping that vehicle? If that vehicle indeed was not supposed to be there, <coughs> as we're busy with Fender, other police officers should be attending to the vehicle. Or, hey, wait, we're still attending to this matter. Now in the screen, you can count. There are more than 50, there are more than 12 people in uniform. Yes. Does anybody take any measure to prevent that vehicle from no coming one. inside? Besides, Mr. Fenton. No one. Right. I'm going to move forward. Now you see the state witness talking to accused number two. That one I'm very disappointed with. His statement and what he said here are not worth of a uh, uh, law enforcement well, officer. Let me ask you, did that person stop your vehicle outside of the cemetery? No, he never stopped my vehicle. Even in his statement, he doesn't say that, or you or she. And he has, he, if, he, if he had said that in his statement, I would respect him. And he has, but, does, he, does he do anything to stop the vehicle from No, proceeding? he doesn't do that. 
but to be prepared to be coerced into saying wrong things under oath. It's a terrible thing to do, including for those who coerced him to come and disown his own statement. Horrible. Now you see the complainant there. Does he seem to have suffered any injuries? Oh, no, he's proper. You see, no one, your worship, is making calls or running or doing anything to get reinforcement to go after that car. That car goes inside without any problem. Now, your worship, our car is, is not part of the convoy. Um, uh, Lawrence, if you can stop it there. Uh, yeah, 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 there. Your worship, before our car came in, in between, uh, we, we waited for a bit for us to come in. If you can check the distance. There is no traffic officers. It is their own evidence to you that the last vehicle of the convoy is the traffic officers or motorcycles or anything of that sort. Where are those motorcycles between my car and the one that went in before? And then now my car has gone in. The other car is coming after mine. Where is the motor vehicles uh, that blocks the convoy, the last cars of the convoy? Where are they here? You mean the tail of to the convoy? To show that this was not, to show that this was still a convoy and that my car was part of the convoy. Because immediately before me, there were supposed to be motorcycles. They are not there. Immediately after me, there were supposed to be motorcycles. They are not there, meaning the convoy is still proceeding. Do you know this vehicle that's driving in? No, I don't know. It looks like a hearse. Now, the, can the hearse not, can, can it ever be argued that the hearse was not part of the convoy? No ways. No ways. Now, even after the hearse, I'm going to show you for a while, do you see motorcyclists arriving? I see Fenter on a walkie-talkie walking nicely. going to try to get the other view now outside of the gate. I need my learned friend's assistance. It is in order. You've watched the video now, Mr. Malema. Um, if we can come back to, to what transpired on that day. Once you were inside of this, of this uh, memorial park, what happened? 
we attended the burial of uh, uh, Miss Mandela. Did uh, anybody come and approach you and no tell one. you you had no right to be there? No one. Did anybody come and tell you that your vehicle had no right to be no there? No one. You and the other occupants of the car, did you have any personal authorization to be there? We're hanging it on our chest. What was that? The accreditation. And was that vehicle accredited? The vehicle was accredited. Uh, there is a video which they showed here in this court with the accreditation on the dashboard. I'm going to show you the photos. Yeah? Yes. I hand to you Exhibit 4. I'm going to ask you to turn in Exhibit 4 to page 4.6. See if you can identify it. I must go away. The front page is 4.1. You see they're numbered and turned to 4.6. These are photos, it's common cause. They're photos that were taken out of the video footage that was available. Six. Yeah. Do you see the vehicle? Yes. And is there anything that you wish to point out to the Honorable Court? On the uh, the second picture, yes. If you look at through the windscreen, my worship, there is a accreditation there. What? Well, there is no one who puts anything there. There's no. That's not a place to put no. a newspaper or anything of that sort. Oh, the, the version changes. Firstly, is that a reflection, or do you actually see a document on that windscreen? I see a document. Yeah. Right. Secondly, did you or anybody else slip that in behind the colonel's back as he contended? What? Did you or anybody else slip that in behind the colonel's back? Why would Young we do that? And where are we going to get that from? Why are we going to get that from? The, the colonel asked the guy to identify himself. He did that, showed him uh, the name tag, showed him the accreditation. Then the second question was, who are you driving? And it was Mr. Malem. That's where the problem started. Now, I know it's difficult for you, and you explain the new commit. Can you tell the court how you are feeling on that day? It was a... Uh, a very difficult day, a very emotional day. Um, I came into politics when I was very young, and uh, I was uh, raised by people like Winnie Mandela. I've been uh, very close to her, and uh, I could not have imagined that uh, uh, I would be stopped from uh, burying her. My relationship with her, your worship, is known to all South Africans who are not ignorant. Only those who are ignorant and do not know what's happening in this country will not know how I relate with her. So and in that uh, context, if someone told you that you weren't allowed to go in personally, what would your response be? I was not going to allow that. You know, uh, Lawrence, you guys can find me guilty uh, and send me to jail for years you want to. But if you are going to send me to jail for burying my mother, so be it. For Winnie, I can go to jail. For Winnie, I can be killed. I did that when she was alive, and I did that when she passed away. I defended her. So I seek no favor from anybody. I live by my principle. I did not violate any law. I wanted to bury my mother. And if that is the crime I committed, I'm proud to have committed that crime. Send me to jail if you want. Now, if someone said, fine, you were allowed inside because you had something, a, 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 a lanyard around your neck, but that vehicle wasn't allowed inside, what would your response be? No one told me that. I don't care about vehicles. I, I do not uh, put uh, attachment to vehicles. I'm saying to you, on daily basis, we are told drop here and walk. I do that. That's part of my life. 
Why would I fight for a vehicle to go in? I don't care about a vehicle. I care about me being stopped from burying my mother. And no one was stopping the vehicle. They stopped me. What? Anything, my worship, anything didn't matter that day as long as I can bury my mother. That's what matters. Was that vehicle authorized to enter that memorial? It point? was authorized, and uh, it went through security check. It was in the basement of FNB with president's vehicles, former president, heads of states. It was part of the convoy from the FN, I mean Orlando to uh, the cemetery. Were you and the passengers, all four passengers in that vehicle, allowed to enter that memorial center? Yes, we were. Now, I'm going to ask you culturally, can you explain to the court the significance or importance of funerals and paying respects to deceased pe uh, people? Culturally, what is it? What impact does it have on Your you? Worship, uh, you were going to deny me a closure. You were going to deny me a closure that I have no closure with the person I've known all my life. And in our culture, when you don't have such a closure and your things don't go right, you keep on blaming that occasion where you are not allowed to say goodbye uh, to your loved ones. It's a ritual but also it's a healing process, it's a closure. And nobody was going to deny me from having a closure. Uncultured people with no tradition may not understand that. I accept, but this is who we are. But I haven't seen um, the photograph that I haven't received, I have seen that I haven't received, the photograph that you referred to, but I'm reluctant to delay issues. Can you explain to the court what you... Uh, you might approach. Now, look at it and show it to my learned friend because I haven't seen it. Sorry, I am going to object with all due respect. I have not seen this. Just before you do object, I think Mr. Oudis wants to approach you as well and disclose to you. I do take into account it was not disclosed. Bishop, I have in court now received three photographs that I'd like to show to my learned friend. I've also noticed the time. It is one o'clock. I think I probably it would be an appropriate time for you to go through the photos as well and Thank then you, also sir. disclose it to Ms. Hart. And as your worship, please. Thank you. Uh, at a later stage, you can then, the parties can inform the court how they want to deal with the same. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Malema. Thank you, Mr. Malema. You're still under oath. You are not allowed to discuss your evidence with anyone. You understand? Yes. Thank you. We will adjourn for a lunch break and we will uh, return at quarter to two. As we should do. May stay in the stand, Lazi. Quarter to No, no, but I'll explain to you where it comes from. If you look on uh, YouTube, then they say you. If you Google the winning and the funeral procession, I'll the phone in front of
As opposed to outside. 
Bonjour, ik ben Dalia Scoots. Ik heb jouw voice naar te luisteren. Dus het is leuk. Maar het is een slijm op die long, ek hoor goed as jy weet net een bykie leer dan ruik veel ouder bykie man. Die antwoord, gaan help jy eens ons probeer. Excuse me, let me go let me go miss. Yes, now you are getting stuck. Well, we have a my windows broken, and the key we've been with Marlu, but she never shows up. Look, 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 look. die staat kan sê, ja, kom ons praat, en die staat staat vir die hoor aan die klaar, wat Emrit is. En die staat kan sê, ok, ek kan by my klaar, wat Emrit is, hoor, of hulle bereid sal wees om te bemid. Dit word gewoonlik een alternatieve dispute resolutie genoem, maar ek weet nou nie, mis nie self nou, dus ek weet nie hoe, of gaan hulle daai moeten doen, gaan hulle pleit in een komst doen nie, ja, maar om hulle te hoop het, ons hulle wil een vertoor, ok, hier, die ander vertoor, wat dit beteken is, sy wil die reergende briefie skryf aan die directeer, die nationale directeer, ja, ja, wat is die hoofbrief en sal, so ok, ja, so dit, maar hy sal nou weg aan die directeer van die openbare vervolging, dit is nou die antlaas vir baas, 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 en, te sê, dit is om hierdie redes wat ons voor ons klein moet nie vervolg word nie. En dan kan hulle ook bysê, dit sê, met ons, ons het in een gesprek getreed met die staat en die klaar, en dit is wat ons besluit het, 
weet wat, hulle kan nog enig iets in die brief sê, ja, en dan vir iedere keer besluit, ok, ja, ons krijg terug, of nie, ons gaan aan die vervolg. Maar die makkelijkste vir jou gewees dit, sê hy, hy gaan nog gaan vertoor, oor hoekom elke nie vervolg nie word. Ja, ok. Ja, maar jy is ook nou te technisch te wees. Hoekom wil jy dit so stel? Klaar kan sê, oe, ek wil nou nie meer my pa aanklaf vir vertrag nie, en ek wil die sal terugkrijg. So, ja, so, maar, ek denk, weet jy, is dit bezig om te rechtstechnisch daar te wees, as, as, ek wil vir jy gesê, hulle wil vertoorig, dan, dan, dit is wat nie skryf, hulle wil vertoorig, en wat gewoonlik dan gebeur, dat hulle sal vir jy vir hulle vrek, of sy die gebuis, terwijl het, wat dan gebeur is, die directeer vir hulle waar vervolging moet ek oorweeg, en een beslissing maak of gaan hulle aangaan om die vervolg al dan. Dit is die makkelijkste. Ja, nou mooi. Ok, stop het. Ek sal die hier vir recht kyk. Check, ja, as jy wil. Ik heb het niet wakker, dus dat is wat klaar. Als hij vroeg wat hij nou, wie is hij klaar en die handjes is al op die, die weg is als ik vier goed voel. Ja, die moet je mooi. 
Ik kan me die staat in acht nemen. Ik denk dat je kom maar te Je kan niet direct met die staat praten. Ik heb het al zonder ook al klaar. Je mag blij in het weet, Michael, want die boys naar het kringen die luisteren, die moet ook nog heel de tijd weer zo gaan. Je moet van mijn oor voor het opa werk. Ja, ik ga. 
Sunday I go to church. No. Oh. 
Strong, strong, stronger, even quite from my heels. And then after then I got in some uncertain plays and then
we're gonna be back for this one because we all this was completely yeah. a little bit with me. But that's what people might want to start in the meeting because <laughs> they're really meeting with the prosecutor and so I don't I don't want to bump into you. Like you like me. I think four.
Thank you. It's case number three stroke four zero six seven stroke two thousand and nineteen. The appearance is at the resumption these is before. Mr. Ndlozi, you may be seated. Thank you. This is what is my intention to uh, to introduce three photographs. Well, just before we do, I just swear in Mr. Malema so that we can then proceed. Thank you, sir. Can you indicate to the court your full name and surname? Julia Sello Malema. Mr. Malema, you're still under oath. You have not discussed your evidence with anyone. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Odis? It's my intention to introduce three photographs of the convoy on that day. <coughs> and the relevance of your ship appears from the cross-examination of Mr. Fenter. I understand my learned friend is objecting. Um, if she wants to place her objection on record, we took this off the, if you Google uh, when you and Dada's funeral procession, these are photographs from that website that we created whilst I was in court. I didn't have access to them before. I understand she has an objection to it. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Thank you, Your Worship. I indeed have an objection to these photographs being used. Your Worship, as I said, before I place the basis for my objection um, on record, I have said to Advocate Hodes that um, when he wanted to present it, Your Worship, that is when I came, became aware, and when the accused testified that there's photographs, Your Worship. So I was not made aware of this before, Your Worship. Uh -huh. And I'm going to object to the photos being used today, Your Worship, on the basis of documentary evidence. This is a large photograph that I can see. And in terms of the legislation, Your Worship, authenticity needs to be proven, Your Worship. Originality needs to be proven. If you go on terms of Section 15, one of the ECT Act as well, Your Worship, um, provides for the general admissibility of data messages. It is important to note that Section 15, one does not make every data message admissible, and the wording of the section indicates that data message may be inadmissible on grounds contained in other laws. Your Worship, um, these photos that is enlarged, Your Worship, I cannot see 
any date or anything you worship um, on these photos. So I believe that my learned colleague um, should then prove authenticity in this matter, your worship. Please, the court. Look at that. Your worship, I explained where I got them. I won't, uh, I can't take, <coughs> take it further than that. What I will do, your worship, is I'll avoid using them. I thought they would have assisted the court that I can deal with this issue without the use of the documentary evidence, if I may proceed on that basis. You may do so. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Malema, it was put to Colonel Fent on your behalf that if you look on SABC TV or YouTube, uh, it would appear that the convoy is much larger than he had told the court. Do you have any comment? Yes, the reference is page 5. <coughs> Of the, of the transcript of the 29th of October 2020 it starts from there. I agree. All right. Now, w w I want to put to you that uh, uh, if you can give the court some indication of the amount of vehicles that were in the convoy and the types of vehicles that were in the convoy. Well, there were different types of uh, vehicles. The president was there. Two former presidents were there and uh, the former deputy presidents were there and we had other heads of state uh, some of the ministers and deputy ministers and dignitaries and there were buses assigned to family members as well uh, which were part of uh, the convoy so you can imagine uh, how many cars are there especially when you've got former heads of state and heads of state and former deputy president. Now, you refer to buses. Do you mean mini buses, large no, commercial buses. buses, or both? Buses, buses. I mean both. You can say both. But in this case, I was referring to proper, proper buses that were some used for shuttling uh, the ministers uh, to the stadium and from the stadium uh, to the gravesite. And at page 7, it was put to Colonel Fenter that even after 1,600 hours, once these vehicles arriving from the stadium, uh, white vehicles that were just put to a part of the uh, funeral parlor, and um, he said there were also military vehicles that were white. Do you have any comment? There were military vehicles that were white, yes. Right. Uh, and then it was put to him that your vehicle was part of that convoy. What's your comment in that regard? I was part of that convoy. Were there any motorcycles in that convoy? There were motorcycles in front and at the back. Were there any that also that traveled alongside beside no. the ones in front and the back? No. The, that uh, uh, the picture that they are refusing you to introduce to court for purposes of denying me justice will show you that there are no uh, motorcycles in between. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell this court about these charges and this incident? Well, uh, I think that uh, these charges emanate from white supremacism, where a white Afrikaner male feels that his ego, a fragile ego, has been tempered with that he cannot be pushed by black African children. The worship, police get pushed all the time. And if police were to open common assault cases against people who push them, when they execute their duties, you can imagine that these courts will be overcrowded with unnecessary uh, cases. So if this does not come from white supremacism and hatred of certain people, why did you refuse the Ubuntu approach? Because if you're seeking justice, engaging one another to show each other's fault and perhaps for others to accept that they were wrong to do what they did. It is also justice. Afri Forum is as the center because its responsibility is to spread hatred and divisions amongst our people. And that's why I'm not shocked. But what shocks me is the National Prosecuting Authority that uh, coaches witnesses and make them change statements as to where that emanates from, I do not know, except that uh, I will suspect that it's a... I'm going to object to this line of questioning whether 
Accused is now saying that the NBA coaches witnesses your worship. It's not a this question. Is, I'm answering. I am speaking moment, to Mr. the magistrate. Marana. I'm speaking as well. Can I just say for order? Thank you. Thank you, worship. May I address the court? Thank you, worship. I'm objecting to this this line of questioning, where the accused is now insinuating your worship, saying that the NPA coaches witnesses your worship. There is no basis. There is no fact, your worship. So I'm asked the court, your worship, to make a ruling, please. Yes, there it is. Your worship, there's nothing court. improper irregular in the question. And if my learned friend takes issue with what the witness is saying, then she's welcome to cross-examine him. There's nothing improper irregular. He's mentioned it earlier in his testimonies once you never objected. Um, so I don't know on what basis she objects to this line of question because the question was open-ended. It wasn't, didn't elicit anything irrelevant or, or irresponsible. It was a fair question and I honestly believe he is entitled to answer this in the manner that he is doing so. Thank you. The court will rule on the following objection with regards to the state say indicating that specifically with regards to the witness answer indicating that the NPA is coaching witnesses in this regard. It's not the first time that the witness has testified to that extent. And also with regards to the question which was imposed, the court also find it to be a fair answer with regards to the witness giving his opinion in this regard. So the court is allowing the question. You may proceed. Because of, of that attitude of the NPA coaching witnesses, your worship, if you had an objective NPA, that is not politically embedded, and that seeks to pursue certain interests outside justice, it would have been the NPA that would have recommended that there be a mediation uh, between the parties so that a common ground is found. We cannot afford in this democracy to have an embedded NPA that doesn't seek to find a solution to problems, but instead uh, look at who is involved, then see an opportunity to destroy such character. Now, prior to the 14th of April 2018, did you know this Colonel Fenter? I don't know him. I've got nothing to do with him, and there's no way I will uh, go charging on a person that I do not know. Your worship, uh, Colonel Fenter was wearing, was is a tall, well-built African male in a police uh, camouflage. Why would you want to tamper with such a person? Unless you feel that an injustice <coughs> is being uh, made against you and you realize you've got nothing else but to defend yourself against an injustice. Thank you. I have no further questions, Your Worship. Thank you. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Worship. On the 14th of April 2018, is it correct that you were in the black Mercedes veto? If you cannot hear me, you can tell me I can speak louder. I didn't hear that. Okay. On the 14th of April, on the day of the incident, is it correct that you were in the black Mercedes veto vehicle? Yes. It's not veto, it's Viano. As a Viano, okay. Yes. The, you've, you've seen the video footage, Advocate Holders has played it for you. The black vehicle that is shown, you were in that vehicle, is that correct? The piano. Yes. Yes. Okay. Is it correct that you were sitting at the back? Yeah. Is it correct that accused number two was a passenger next to the driver? Mm -mm. There the were two protectors in front, and then accused number two and myself were at the back. Were at the back, okay. Mm. I'm going to play the video footage for you. Sure.
do you agree with me? I'm going to play it again. Just here. I see blue lights on the BMW X5. Did yes, you see that? I saw that. Okay. Do you see the blue lights on that yeah. vehicle, the second X5? Yes. Okay. At 1547, I'm not sure if you can see, um, Advocate Holders, you can say if I'm correct or not. 1547. I can see. Okay. My eyes are still sharp. That's very good. Five forty-eight. Mm -hmm. Fifteen forty-eight. The vehicles are moving. The two vehicles. So fifteen forty-eight. Eleven seconds. Twelve seconds. At this point, you agree with me? There is a gap. Yes. Okay. You agree with me? No vehicle is coming at this stage. Yes. Thank you. It's fifteen forty-eight and 21 seconds. You agree with me there's no vehicle still coming? Yes. <clears throat> we are now at 1549. Absolutely. You agree with me? Yes. Minute. Okay, 60 seconds. Oh. I'm going to stop there. Okay. Yes. Now, can I ask, you were in the vehicle. When Colonel Fenter stopped the vehicle, to whom did he speak to? To the driver. To the driver. Did he go to the driver's side? Yes. But your worship, uh, let me drive a different point home, which she's not doing. She's asking me, from this minute and this minute, can you see there's no car moving? From this minute to this minute, can we see there's no car moving? You know why the car is not moving in between that car and my car? Fenter has stopped my car. It's not in the camera. That delay is caused by Fenter, who has stopped my car. Because if you're going to use that to determine that I was not part of convoy, then it's misleading. My car was stopped. Then what happens after? You see a fracas to show that there was some form of discussion off camera. That's why there is a gap. And that discussion did not lead anywhere. And then the fracas started. I'm going to go again to my question. 
Colonel Fenter went to the driver's side, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So he spoke to the driver? Yes. Did you hear when he spoke to the driver? Yes. Okay. What did he say to the driver? He asked the driver uh, to show him the accreditation. The driver showed him the accreditation on his chest and the vehicle accreditation. Then he asked the driver, who are you driving? Then the driver said, I'm driving Mr. Malema. Okay. So did the driver show his, I'm talking about the driver now, yes. did he show his accreditation or are you saying that he was around his neck? Yeah, the one okay. around his neck, he showed that. And the vehicle accreditation, Yes. did he take it out or did he just no, no, he say just on the dashboard? No, no, he just pointed it there. He just pointed it there. Okay. I am going to show you before I move on. Um, Advocate Holders, I'm not sure if you still have that picture, Advocate Holders, of the accreditation that you gave him. Can you just give it back to him, please? Exhibit 4. 4.6. The data is also to be correctly reflected. The question is concerning Exhibit 4.6. It was 4.6. 4.6. That is correct. Thank you. When the driver showed Colonel Fent to the accreditation, was he talking about that accreditation? Yes. Okay. You agree with me in that photo that you have on the dashboard can you see any writing on there no you can't you agree with me it is a square white object on the picture that we have in front of you your worship this comes from this is an image from a, a video camera and therefore when you take an when you make an image out of a video camera there's no way it can be explicitly clear. It's given. Um, and therefore, uh, if, even if I don't see the letters written here, we must accept how was this picture generated. And if it was generated from a video, then we know it can be a visible here. I want to ask you again, on that picture I can't there, see. On that, you can't see. I Thank can't you. see what is written there. Thank you. Yes. I'm putting to you that on that dashboard of that vehicle that you say is a permit, you say you can't see, but it looks like a, a, a square white object just on the picture. Do you agree with me? I put it to you. I was there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm an eyewitness. I'm not hearsay. This was a permit put on the dashboard. And ordinarily, your worship, vehicle permits are put on the dashboards. But if you have never been a VIP, you will never understand what we're talking about. I'm going to put it to you again. On that photo that you have in front of you, sir, putting it to you again, the object that we can see there, you said you can't see um, any writings on there? Give you that. What we see there is just a white square object. What I see here, Your Worship, it's a permit. Why? I'm an eyewitness. I was there. You see it on the pictures. That's not my fault. I was there. And the only person can be relied on, on what this is, is a person who was there, who is an eyewitness. That's so how the courts work. Not hearsay and favoritism. I was there. What will this be if it's not a permit? Because if you look at uh, ordinarily, I'm driving the same car. We can go to it now. There's nothing on the dashboard. Why would there be anything on the dashboard? I'm going to ask this question again, and I'll ask the court to draw an inference. What I'm saying is, <coughs> on the picture there that you have in front of you, that is evidence, on that picture it is a, a, on there, it is a white square object. On the picture here, Your Worship, is a permit. How do you say it's a permit? You I can't see any right. You saw it. But on that picture, sir, it is evidence. You see, the problem is if you are there and you get to see something in the picture, you can relate. Okay. I can relate. Okay. You, you can't relate. I am putting to you again, sir. 
None of us were there. Yes. You were there. Yes. Painter was there. All the other witnesses. Yes. Now I'm putting to you what we have in front of us as evidence. You say this, you can't see any writing, but on there, just looking at the dashboard, looking in the window, it is a white square object. That is the shape of the object. You agree with me? That on, is the shape of the object. On the, on the window is the yes. permit. Yes, but listen, it is a square white object. Am I right? But listen, it's a permit. I'm putting it to you again. It is a square white object that can be seen. I'm not asking if it's a permit or not. I'm asking the object I'm putting that you it to see. you. It's a permit. You're not allowed to put to me anything, Your Worship. Can but the court please explain? Just one moment. Thank I have you. listened to the answers of the witness specifically when he oh. says, I put it to you, but the court did not interpret it as a question that actually yes. uh, would require you to respond to the witness, but his answer is relating to answer your question which has been put to, to the witness. Therefore, I have not stopped it at all when you were asking. You may proceed, Ms. Hart. May I proceed? Thank you, Worship. Yes. I will use it for argument. And that you say it's a permit, but in the picture that we have before us, it is a square white object. Okay. Did Colonel Fainter speak to you in the, in the vehicle? No, he didn't speak to me. Did he speak to accused number two? I accuse number two is here, your worship. He will answer for himself. I'm asking you, were, you were there, sir. Do you know or do you not know? No, I'm not forced to answer that question. The accused number two is here, you will answer for himself. Do you remember if Colonel Fenter spoke to accused number two? Uh, Colonel Fenter didn't speak to me. Yes, now I'm asking yes. you, were sitting next to him, was Colonel Fenter speaking to accused two? Do you know? I don't know. Accused number two will speak for himself. So, Colonel Fedor never spoke to you? No. Okay. Remember, you said, did Colonel Fender speak to you while you were in the vehicle? Yes. I said no. Yes, we are still there, sir. Yes. Okay. When did you move out of the vehicle? When uh, Colonel Fender blocked the vehicle. Uh, in front. I got out so that he can uh, see and perhaps recognize me. And only then did I speak to Colonel Fender, asking him what, what is he doing. When you asked on your version, that is not what the complainant said, but on your version, the, you said that um, you ask Colonel Fendel, what is he doing? Yes. Were you now out of the vehicle? Were you standing I'm on the front side? side? In front. In front where he was, according to you, blocking yes. the vehicle. Yes. Were you standing next to him? Yes. And Colonel Fendel's reply, according to you? No, he started speaking in Africans. I don't know Africans. Then that's when I realized there's no cooperation. At that time, you say you realize there's no cooperation, he spoke in Afrikaans. Did you ask at that moment to speak to his senior? No, I moved, I went to the driver's side, uh, wanting to drive the car myself. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I moved, sorry, continue. I moved to the driver's side, wanting to drive the car myself. I can't find it. And then when I was on the driver's side, I saw some uh, passerby pushing him and asking him if he doesn't know who this person is. Okay. You did not ask them to speak to a supervisor of no, Colonel Fenter at that moment? not at all. Okay. When you say... You wanted to drive the vehicle yourself, did you get in the vehicle? No, I didn't get in. When I was about to get into the vehicle, then that commotion started. Then I went to him, and then I pushed him. Who's him? Colonel Fenter. Fenter, yes. Colonel Fenter, okay. You say, which I just need to understand, bypasses 
was pushing him. What do you mean bypasses? Who's Some bypasses? Some people that can recognize. People that were there. People who were part of the mourners. They could see that there is a situation there and they recognized me. And they, then they asked him, don't you know who this person is? And then when he could not cooperate, they pushed him. Then I came back from the driver's side and I said to him, stop what you are doing. And I started pushing him. So you came back from the driver's side. Yes. You were no longer with Colonel Fenter. Yes. You then came back yes. and you also pushed yes. Colonel Fenter. Yes, to move away from my car. And before you pushed, some other people pushed him as well. Yes. He says that in his own vision, even himself. It's fine. I'm, I'm going on what you are saying. Mm -hmm. So other people pushed him, and then you decided to push him. I also. came back to push him or no, stop what we are doing. And when you say push him, did you use your hands like this? How yes. did you push him? I push him, use my hands like this. If the court can just no note the demonstration, Your Worship. That the court have observed that the witness before court have left up both his hands in front of it and showed with the forward uh, direction that he have pushed the said witness. So how does Ms. Hart? Ms. Hart? And when these strangers or bypasses was pushing him, the, what did Colonel Fainter do? He didn't do anything. He keeps on blocking the, the car. I, I don't know whether he was being possessed or what, because mm. Fainter, mm. because I've never seen police be, he, he blocked the car with his body. Like this, he blocked the car with his body. You know, your worship. If you we had a video of the outside uh, before, because this one it starts showing when he, where they are. It's a it's a ray of the gate. If you will see the video outside, you will see what the uh, uh, Colonel Fender was doing. He acted like a possessed person who, who, who was not reasoning at all. Okay. So, these strangers are pushing him, you come back to push him, is that correct? Yes. Okay. How many times did you push him? Ah, I wouldn't know. You know, when there is a commotion, you don't say, I'm pushing, push one, I'm pushing, push two, I'm pushing, oh. uh, uh, there's no such a thing. You can't count them. So, d you did not count, but you know for a fact you pushed him? Uh, it's undisputed. Sure. You pushed him. And that time when Colonel, when you were pushing Colonel Fenter, did he do anything to you? Yes, he, 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 he keeps on charging. Charging how? Like when mm. you push him, your worship, he goes like this, like push him back. Oh. I see you are making a movement regarding how we charge. Did yeah. he charge at you or yeah. back to at the vehicle? Me. At you. At me. Just for record purpose, this is how the court have observed when the witness says that he was charging. And it is then referring to retaliation to the witness before court. Is that correctly observed? So when you pushed him, he's now, is he just doing this with his body? No, he's was coming he with his body. Like, the reason why he's pushing back is because he wants to stand in front of the car so that the car doesn't move. Okay, so he just wants to stand in front of the car? Yes. Okay. Did he use his hands when you say charging or pushing? Did he use his hands no, to no, push no, no. you he never at all? No, no, no. He never pushed me. He's push. He's using his body, body. refusing to move from the car. So oh. he'll push him two. Then he'll take two steps backward, then two steps forward again. Oh, so he yes. was he was not attacking you any bystanders. By standers. He was just standing. He was refusing, according to your version, to be removed from the vehicle, the front part of no, the vehicle. No, he was charging, attacking something else, you know? He was you charging. You don't have to attack. Sometimes you have mm. to just charge by uh, the body action. How you use your body can also be described as charging. But so when a person goes like, you can see that this person is not being friendly. So when I say charging, I mean he, has not, he was not being friendly. He was, oh, you're saying, he's, if you, now we need, to, we need to have clarity on this charging. Because yeah. now you're using the word, he's not being friendly. Okay. You are pushing Colonel Fenter. Yeah. Okay. Did he move a bit backwards when you pushed yeah, him? Yeah, one, two steps One, two backward. steps. And then he came forward again. Three one steps or two, forward. Two, three steps forward. Mm. Is that what you mean by charging and his yes. body? Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes. Okay, we just need to get that for the yes. record, Your Worship. Okay, so Colonel Fenter at that time never pushed you when he was moving three steps forward. I've or never made such an allegation. Now I'm asking. Yes, never pushed. He's me. never pushed you. 
Okay. Now, he now, you pushed him, he moved two steps back, three steps forward, he's there, we are there now. Mm. Okay, he now moving back three steps. Then what happened? Then uh, the, um, I think accused two and uh, one of the protectors and those other people who were there, they all came. And then when he saw a lot of people now pushing him, he now started uh, going back. He was no longer coming forward. I think he was realizing <coughs> that uh, he's actually attracting more people. And then we pushed him uh, to the side. Okay. So, okay, let's go back. Mm -hmm. Where you see the queues number two and the protectors, they all came. Mm -hmm. If you say they all came, they all came out of the vehicle. Yes. Okay. Not, not, not all protectors. The driver was there. The driver. Mm -hmm. So, okay. There was so no one in the vehicle that time. It was only the driver. Only the driver. Mm -hmm. So, queues two came out of the vehicle. How many protectors came out? of the vehicle. One. One protector yes. came out of the vehicle. Yes. They all came and when they came out of the vehicle, what is the protector's name or can you use his name? No. Okay. So this protector and accused number two, they came out. When they came out of the vehicle, what did they do? No, they came to join me and these other people who were there. And then we all started pushing him. Remember here we are talking about well-built, highly trained African air mail. And now we're just the piece, mm. small bodies. Mm. We are pushing, pushing. And when everybody joined, including yes. these people we don't know, to mm. push him, mm. only then did he move to the side. Okay. And he stopped resisting. So accused number two also pushed Colonel yes. Fenter when yes. he got out of the vehicle yes. and the protector. Yes. Okay. So when they were pushing Colonel Fenter, did you also push again or did you not? I pushed. You I was pushed. pushed. They joined me in the so pushing. The, so the three of you that we know of, besides the bystanders yeah. that we don't know, so the three of you and other bystanders, strangers, pushed Colonel Fenter again. Yes. Okay. And when the three of you, what the other strangers, pushed Colonel Fenter, did Colonel Fenter push any of you or assault any of you at that time? No. Can you remember, if it's in your memory, if you can recall, how many more or less, besides the three of you, you, accused one, two, accused one and two, and the protector, how many other strangers or by my sense were pushing? I think we were, with us included, between six and seven. Six and seven people. Yeah. So when the three of you and the other people were pushing Colonel Fenter, did you now push him away from the vehicle? Yes. Did Colonel Fenter say anything while the pushing was going on, while you and accused to uh, pushing Colonel Fenter, did he say anything? Fender was speaking in Afrikaans throughout. So he was speaking. So I wouldn't pick up why what he was saying. So the first push, uh, when you no, pushed remember him. remember when I got out of the car, I spoke to him, what are you doing? Yes. And then he, he spoke, spoke in, in Afrikaans. Afrikaans. Yes. But now when I left him, I yes, went to, to the, the other driver. side. Yes. When I was on the other side of the driver, the passerbys came yes. and started talking to him and said, you don't know who this person is. Mm. He kept on talking to them in Africans and they started pushing him. Yes. Then and I then came you back came. Mm -hmm. and then I joined them in the pushing. pushing. Yes. And then accused number two and the protector came. came. And then that's how we managed to push him yes. off the car. Yes. I understand that. What I'm saying is, did he say anything? Remember, Art, did he do anything back? He, didn't he said push something. Him. Did he yeah. say, but when you, were, when you were pushing him alone and you went to push him alone, did he say anything to you at that time? Yes, he, he spoke. In Afrikaans, yes. but you don't know what he said. Yes. Okay. But uh, very angry. Very you can, angry. You could see the facial expression. I might mm. not hear the language, but uh, he was not sending love. Okay, he was not sending love. Is mm. that so? Okay. 
And when accused two also now came in, the protector also pushing. Did he? Didn't do anything? But did he say anything? He kept on time. speaking. In kept Africa. on speaking in Africa. Yes. Okay. Okay. So. All three of you are now pushing him. When the three of you were pushing him, he was away from the vehicle. Yes. We pushed him away from the vehicle. Away from the vehicle. At that time, still, did you, when the, the accused number two and the protector came out of the vehicle, did you, at that moment, ask to speak to his supervisor or senior? No. Okay. Not at all. Do you know if accused number two asked to speak to his senior I or manager? Know. Okay. But you did not ask? To speak, you did not ask to speak to a senior or no, manager? I didn't ask to speak to any senior. But we spoke to those, um, uh, I don't know what you call those uniform police. That were standing here. Yeah, these guys. We kept on asking them, why are you folding your arms when this white man is blocking us from attending Mama's funeral? Okay. Because you can all see that he's misbehaving. Okay. They all pleaded mm. with us, please, please go back to the car, go back to the car, leave him. So these in military uniforms, Navy uniforms, they pleaded for you to go back in the vehicle? Yes. They are the ones that we spoke to. We didn't, by virtue of uniforms, we thought there is some seniority there. So we, we engaged them. We mm. said, why are you not blogging this white man? Because you can also see mm. your worship. They are not joining him. They are just standing there because mm. they are puzzled by his behavior. Mm. And we said to them, why do you allow this white man to stop us from attending uh, Mama's funeral? And you are just standing there. They yes. said, please, 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 just go back to the car. Go back to the car and go inside. Okay. But what I want to know from you, when the accused two and the protector joined in the pushing, at that time you did not ask to speak to a senior. But you, you wish if I answered that question. The court must protect me. I said, I never asked, uh, asked to speak to any senior. Thank you. And I don't know if the accused number two asked to speak to any senior. I'm playing an open card. I've got Thank nothing you. to hide. Thank you. Okay, so you never uh, spoke to any senior. Okay. So I'm going to play the footage for you. Just for this about us. The protector you're talking about is a, the person with the umbrella. No, 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 no. Was he not the protector you're no. talking about? It's not him. Okay. Play Mr. Rama. Stop quickly. Just hold this one. Just hold that one. There is a person in between you and Colonel Fenter, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it seems Colonel Fenter is moving to the side of the vehicle. That's what I told you. When you, you push, push him, him, he goes back. You push him, he goes back. But at, That's what he's doing. Yes, but at that time he's now being pushed to the side of the vehicle on that side. Okay, continue Mr. Baba. Stop, stop. Okay, play. Can you play it in slow mode? It's too fast. Okay, it's fine. Do you see where we are? We are there, and then we're going back to the car. We were at the car, away from the car, and then we're going back to the car. We're gonna because that's what Fender is doing. We're going to get there. We're going to play the yeah. whole video for you. We are just on that side. Do you see that there is someone... The police. That's a police yes. officer. Yes. You see that this police officer is holding up her hands. Mm -hmm. And now Colonel Fenter is now moving on the side to the front. Mm -hmm. And you are now following again. Mm. Pl don't, please uh, don't yes, say, mm, yes. thank you, thank you.
Let's talk, Mr. Baba. You are pushing him again there. Yes. Okay? Yes. Now, it seems that uh, accused number two is now coming as well. I see him there at the back. Yes. Do you see that the police officer's hand is still up? Mm-hmm. Is she saying anything to you at that time? Can I, you remember? I, I can't even remember that there were police there. It seems to me that you were also angry. You see, you I was very angry. Yes. Very angry. And I had all the reasons to be very angry. And you were also not friendly. Yes, yes. I was very angry. Okay. He had no reason to be angry. I don't even think he liked Winnie Mandela. Do you know that Colonel Fenton was trying to contact the VOC? The no, venue operation no. center. How do you contact the VOC with your hands like this? No, I'm asking you. No. Okay. He was not contacting anyone. He was he was not and you heard when he testified, he said at that time that he was trying to get hold of the VOC in order to see if your vehicle can enter. Okay, Your Worship. What are you doing contacting the VOC if this car <laughs> has got no right or these people no right to enter there? There's no reason to contact the VOC. They either have the right or they don't have the right. So contacting the VOC is another defense mechanism which must not be accepted. Two things. You either, this car is allowed or it's not allowed. You don't call anyone. You make that decision alone. They never said, and he never said himself, that their instruction is if they are in doubt about a car, they must call VOC. There was never such an instruction. You heard when Colonel Fenter testified. I'm saying when he testified on the evidence in court. He's saying that he's trying to get hold of Vok. You heard him testify that? Yes. Okay. You see now, you see the radio. I don't see the radio, but I can see his hand is holding something there. There's something. Is, yes. He testified it's a radio. It's a two-way radio. I asked yes. him that's what he testified. Yes. Now, he is, it seems this object the radio that he said, it's now in front of him by his mouth. Okay. Now we can see also the facial expression of accused number two. He was also very furious. Yes. Not friendly. Yes. Yes. So now, at that point, can you see what the police officer is doing? Yeah. If you can't see, you can see. I can see. I can see. Uh, He's blogging. The person with the umbrella. Yes. Yes. Okay. And you can see from Colonel Fenter's body language, he's not coming towards your side. He's at the side of both you and accused number two. He can't be trusted. Yes, but I'm saying on the footage, sir. Yeah, on the footage yes, side, you, you know, the reality and the footage is something else because as he speaks, we are not sure if he wants to come back to the vehicle or he's walking away. So we are acting to prevent him from uh, coming back to the vehicle. Okay. I'm going to go again. Yes. We are just going on the video footage. This yes. is admitted. It's real evidence. So at this moment in time, the accused has a radio in front of his mouth. Oh, sorry, the complainant has a radio in front of his mouth. Thank you, Mr. Otis. And he sighed is towards you and accuse number two. Yes. Yes. Okay. Play, Mr. B. Stop. Can you go a bit back? You are now pushing him against the wall, yes. the guardhouse. There is still, just in his hand, the radio. Yes. It's still in his hand. Okay. Stop, Mr. Baba. At this stage, you are now, what are you saying? It seems you are very angry. I know uh, you said a lot, but uh, can you remember uh, what you said? Uh, that's unfair. I mean, this is how many years now? Four years? I wouldn't remember what I said there. It's you a wouldn't? commotion. But you were angry yes. and you were shouting. Okay. Yes. At this time, you see that the vehicle is moving in the cemetery. Do you agree with me? Exactly what we wanted to achieve. The by vehicle? Putting, pushing him aside to allow the vehicle to pass. Okay. But at this point, I can see the military people on this side by Colonel Fenter. Somebody is this person. Military uniform is 
things as his arms here by Colonel Fenton. And the police is coming to cues number two side. You are pointing a finger. Okay. So everybody's, it looks, everybody's face, so everybody's concentrating on what's happening with, with you, cues um, two and Colonel Fenton. But while this is happening, play Mr. Baba, the vehicle is moving in. Who do you perhaps know at this point gave permission for the vehicle to enter? Now, let's correct one thing. You mm. say everybody is concentrating on us. Yes. And then that the guy next to Fenter is seem to be putting his hands on Fenter. A neutral prosecutor will say, mm. who is not biased, mm. will say the guy is holding back Fenter because that's what he's doing. And therefore, it takes away the story that everybody <coughs> is concentrating on you. He's being held back because they've all come to accept <coughs> that his behavior is unacceptable. We don't know in, that, sir. In, in, no, no. no in, the, in the, in the mm. police practice, mm. is, is such that when a police officer is under attack, all of them join hands in defense of that police officer. They are standing there. They are not doing anything. If anything, you worship, they are holding him back because he's embarrassing them. I'm so glad you said that because the two officers was putting up their hand in front of you were moving as Colonel Fenter is pushing. They were moving to the side of Colonel Fenter. So they were trying to do something, sir, on the video footage. They were trying to intervene to stop the pushing taking place by you and accused number two. No, all I'm saying is that you can't see that Fenter is being held back. Okay. That one you conveniently miss. Okay, it's fine. Mm. But on this video footage, all we know is, we don't know who that person is, we don't have his testimony, all yes. we can see is his hands is on Colonel Fenter, but on the video footage. Okay. Is that correct? No, no, it's, it's being held back because, mm. you see, the problem, uh, your worship, is that to play and stop, when you have stopped, it's no longer in motion. But when he's in motion, you can see that he's holding him back. He doesn't have to tell us he's holding him back. Okay, we can see okay. with our naked eye. Okay. Let's go but back, Mr. Baba, and see if Colonel Fenter is moving to you or moving forward. He's moving behind another person. He's still on the radio. There we go. Just stop there, Mr. Baba. After you just said everybody's on us, all three yes. police officers are on him. But let's let's move that. That was not my question. We will get there, sir. We will get there in time. What I'm saying here, you can go back, Mr. Baba. While everybody was dealing on the commotion side, this vehicle moved in. Do you know if the vehicle, if anybody gave the driver permission to enter at this time? Yes. Okay. Who gave the who gave permission, do you know? No, subs. When they approved uh, it uh, at uh, the lodge. At and the then lodge. it went to the stadium and it went to the cemetery. Okay. I'm asking only here, at this moment, in time. You didn't need anyone to give time. you the permission there. It, that permission is carried through. Okay. You require nobody's permission okay. when you arrive there. I'm going to put it to you. At this moment, just here, you can go back if you want, please, Mr. Baba. At this time, this vehicle is driving through. Let's look at the vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's coming. You are shouting. Cues two also. Colonel Fenton's on the radio. There the vehicle stops. At this time, you can stop, Mr. Baba. I'm putting to you, at this time, while the commotion was going on, this vehicle just drove in. Yes, because Thanks. it had the right to do so. That's what you're saying. It required no Fenton's permission. Okay. That's what you're saying. But you do agree with me that Colonel Fenter was in charge of the main gate? No. Was he not? No, no. It's not for me to agree or to disagree. That's but what I'm, he says. But I'm putting to you that Colonel Fenter's job description on the day in question was to be in charge of the main gate. Can you dispute that? No, I won't dispute it. It's, it's your way. Thank you. So, like um, Officer Mapisa now testified, he is now there by accused number two. His hand is on accused number two. But let's clarify something here, Your Worship. Okay. <laughs> Being in charge 
of the gate. Mm. It doesn't mean you issue out permissions. You are in charge of the gate to allow those with the permit to go in and those who don't have the permit to be given a direction to where they need to park. Colonel Fenton never said to me or to the driver, drop off here and go that side. He never said that. So to be in charge of the gate, you don't issue permits. It's not your responsibility. So I don't know what, what it means to be in charge of the gate. Because once a permission has been issued, no one can stop it, including a person who's in charge of the gate. Your job is just to make sure accredited vehicles go in and those who are not accredited are directed at their relevant place. Okay. You agree with me, Colonel Fenter is standing close to the guardhouse? Come again. Colonel Fenter is standing by the guardhouse. By the guardhouse. Guard yes. The two police officers, I see there's another police officer, Prime Minister Baba, standing with Colonel Fenter. There are three. There are three, yes. Prime Minister B. So, Stop. Your Worship, if there was something mm -hmm. wrong with the way, there are three uniformed police officers. And there is Colonel Fenter, who is allegedly under attack, and fairly so. Why would the police not act on us there and there? They are, they are with him there, and the only reasonable suspicion would be they are saying to him, leave what you are doing. Okay. Because if we're misbehaving, I can okay. tell you now, without any shadow of doubt, police would have pounced on us there and there. Okay. That we will leave for now, okay? <coughs> but you can explain. And there, one of the things I suspect we're saying mm. is exactly what I was saying to you. You can see we're talking to those army uh, people. Mm. We're saying to them, why do you allow him to, to misbehave? Why do you leave this white man to ill-treat us the way he's doing, and you are all here just standing? Okay. All they could say is, guys, please, 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 just go inside the car and go inside. But you agree with me, Colonel Fenter is now standing almost next to or close to the guardhouse, there's three officers standing with him, yes. female officers. And two of the female officers that we saw previously were moving as you were pushing. One's putting up the hand. It seems yes. that this person trying to say stop, trying to intervene. But they were moving as you and accused were pushing Colonel Fenter, accused number two. Is that correct? They were moving along with you, accused um, number two, and Colonel Fenter. They were moving along as both of you were pushing him. Yeah, but for a mm. neutral prosecutor, mm. when they put hands on us, they say stop. But mm. when they put hands on him, they are just laying hands on him. Mm. Okay, what an objective prosecutor. It's fine. So we are talking Can about the order? ladies. No laughing in court. We are talking about the three officers in, 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 in police uniform, sir. You agree with me they were uh, 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 trying to intervene with the pushing. They did. Yes. They intervened. You. Okay. Now Kanofin is standing there with the three officers playing with Sababa. Accused two is putting his hands on Officer Mapisa. And Mr. it was Mapisa It was Officer Mapisa who said here. Yeah. Accused number two kept on saying, Why do you leave this white man to stop us from entering? That is in evidence, sir. Yes. Yes. Okay. So do you see Colonel Fenter is still standing by the, by the, by the guardhouse? Yes. There's a lot of uh, the, poli the three officers was next to him, going to stand in the middle, and then there was military people in front of him. You agree with me? Yes. Okay. Play with the Baba. At that time, before you got into the vehicle, in this vehicle now, did you ask at that time to speak to a senior no. of Colonel Fenton? You did not no. ask. You got in the vehicle and accused two and drove in. The senior said. Don't say, just say yes. Sorry. Uh, yes. Thank you. Continue, Mr. Baba.
did you speak, were you a speaker at the cemetery? At the cemetery? No. You were not a speaker? At the, the, you at were the stadium. At the Orlando Stadium, but not this? No. You were not? Okay. No. There are no speakers at the cemetery, by the way. I'm just asking. <laughs> it might have happened. We don't know. Okay. I'm going on your version, okay? Yeah. What you are saying. Before you got out of the vehicle to speak to Colonel Fenter, okay? Um, you wanted to speak to him to solve the issue. You wanted to speak to Colonel Fenter to solve the issue. Don't say yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Was your life possibly in danger? My Pro life. Yes. Your no, life. My life was not in danger. Your life was not no. in danger. Did it make you angry, according to your version, that a uh, complainant, Colonel Fenter, was speaking of the cons? when you were trying to engage with him? Not necessarily. But you said you couldn't understand him. Yeah, not understanding doesn't mean I would be angry. Were well, you not mean, angry? Uh, the white supremacists mm. always speak in Africans. Always speak in Africans. Yeah. Okay. Your life was not in danger. When you remember, you said you went to the, to the driver's side. Don't? Yes. Thank you. Um, was your life... You know, ma'am, sometimes when yes. I say this, yes. It's that I'm following, and yes. then when you conclude, I'll okay. say yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just, I don't that know. Also, sorry to yes. interject. That is also how I understand, because yeah. I'm also waiting for the question to finish before there's a response. Yeah, so I just uh, go yes. like this, so that when you finish, I say okay. Just for record Thank purpose, you, I will worship. not draw any negative yes. inference from that aspect in this I'm regard, because as I've indicated, yes. that's also how I understand. Thank you, Thank you, Worship. I'm scared because I see him, and I'm not sure if he's saying yes, and then it's not recorded, Your Worship. That is the... The, the yes, issue we will of the wait record. for the conclusion yes. of the question and then we will take okay. it from there. Thank you. When you went to the driver's side, you are going now back to Colonel Fino to push him. W was your life in danger at that moment, sir? No, no, not at all. Not at all. When accused number two came out with the protector to push um, Colonel Fenter, the complainant, was your life or his accused number two's life in danger at any point? No. Our dignity was in danger. Your dignity. Our humiliation was going to be the order of the day. Our enemies will derive pleasure out of the fact that we were denied an opportunity to bury our mother. That was in danger. Our ability to have closure with Mama Mandela was in danger. And in our culture, everything else matters except the burial site. Your Worship, the most critical moment for any funeral is when the coffin goes down and you know that it is what it is and it will never change again. Okay. I will not have find it in me and forgive myself if I had not seen Winnie's casket going down where I will say my last goodbyes. That was what, what was in danger. My but dignity is equally important, but the same as my life is. So my life not being in danger, I cannot allow indignity to be uh, directed at me and I do not do anything in self-defense uh, to defend my dignity. According to Colonel Fenter, and he testified you were here, he said that he had an issue with the vehicle that you were in, that the vehicle was not accredited, did not have a permit. And that is why he stopped the vehicle. It is not correct. It moved from us not being accredited. Then it went to the car, not being accredited. Then it went from the car, even if accredited, will not allow it to enter. Mm. Different 
evasions on what was in dispute have been presented here by himself, which the court has noted during the judgment of 174. Okay. So, you were talking about Ubuntu. Yes. Did you want to apologize at any stage to Colonel Fenter? No, I wanted to have a conversation with him, Yoshi, and ask what went wrong, what necessitated that, and if the need arose for me to apologize, I would have done that without hesitation. The same to him I would expect, of course, that if he realizes that he made a mistake, he will apologize uh, at that point. But he refused that opportunity Did because his uh, supremacism will not allow him to meet these monkeys. Did you um, contact personally? Did you contact the complainant personally? Once you have opened a case, it's always safe to use lawyers to contact uh, the complainant because I do not want to, your worship, be accused of intimidating uh, the witness. So I used uh, my lawyers to contact uh, the complainant. Okay. You agree with me that it is the complainant's <coughs> right as a, a complainant in a criminal case for him to decide whether he wants to settle the matter out of court or go to court? Absolutely. Thank you. It is his right, and uh, it all depends also on our upbringing. We have never been taught to rush matters to court. Uh, when we're growing up, you worship, if we did anything wrong to each other, you'll have the parents of the other one going to the house of the person who's wronged or the other way around. Uh, only when you can't find each other, you can then approach uh, the police. That's what has made our society to be a unique society where we are able to resolve issues amicably without the involvement of the police. But it doesn't take away the right that you have a right to uh, open a criminal uh, case. Thank it's you. Mandela's spirit Thank of Ubuntu you. where he forgave people who mm -hmm. took him to prison for 27 years. Why would you not want to forgive a person who blocked you from entering your mother's funeral? But you agree with me, like you said, he has a right to open a case or not to open a case. Or not to in sort dispute. It out. Not in dispute. Thank you. I'm just going to go to Officer Mapisa yes. that testified. He testified that your vehicle was not part of the convoy and that he stopped your vehicle. He has never stopped my vehicle. Did he not stop the vehicle? No. I remember, Your Worship, I wrote a statement without knowing that uh, Mapisa is going to be a witness here. And I indicated uh, what transpired. And uh, in majority of what I said, it's not in dispute. So if he had blocked my vehicle, I would have known and I would not have missed uh, that uh, opportunity. But he said, what I find very strange, is that that is how he knew who you were. That is why he allowed the vehicle to go to the gate, to Colonel Fenter's side. Because he stopped the vehicle, he saw um, you were in the vehicle, he recognized you. You know, my sister, your worship, um, it pains me that you will have an NPA that couches people mm. to behave in a manner that he behaved. Uh, my piece statement, it's a true reflection mm. of what happened to your worship. Why would my piece forget conveniently that he stopped me. He, he doesn't speak about any stopping of me in his original statement, to a point where the prosecution became so disparate and wanted to cross-examine their own witness. If we did not have uh, a smart lawyers 
who could have been shortcutted. And the next thing, Mapisa made to denounce his own statement, clearly. And I think it's a matter that we should not leave lying down. A complaint should be laid, an investigation should be made as to what really transpired between the statement and the consultation that happened with Mapisa, where he comes here and denounces his own statement. He didn't denounce it anyway. He confirmed that his the statement is a correct version of what happened and still confirmed that his court version, uh, which contradicts the statement, is a correct version. It's for the court to take a decision. Yes, it's for the court. I agree with you. And he has explained why um, he said what he said to the court. He was cross-examined by um, advocate holders and he gave an explanation to the court. Now, what I find is strange, sir, is the fact that he recognized who you were when he stopped you. He didn't look for any accreditation or any sort. He just saw you and he recognized who you were. And without looking for any permits on your side, personal, that's around your neck, or the vehicle, or any sort, he allowed the vehicle in just based because of who you are. It's a pure lie. And, pure and that's what you should be worried about. Hmm. Because even in the statement of accused number two, there's no way where we say there was an officer who stopped us before, and then he recognized us, and then he released us. That can serve very well for our defense, mm. that there was one person who was given the task of blocking vehicles. He blocked us. Upon realizing it is us, he released us because he's a black person, blah, blah. Then the white person stopped us. That, that could have been a very good defense for us. But because it didn't happen, we, don't even, we didn't mention it. You can look at my statement. You can look at the accused number two statement. You can look <coughs> at Fender's statement himself. Nowhere does he say, no, they were stopped before and then referred to me. There's no such a thing. He never stopped us. The stopping, I'm telling you, your worship, he was couched with it in consultation with the prosecution. Okay. You've, you've said that earlier. And I will move on because he has testified he just recognized you. He didn't stop you. Uh, he didn't ask for accreditation. He allowed you to move to Colonel Fender. And he also testified Colonel Fender was in charge of the, of the main gate. <clears throat> that is not in dispute. Okay. And you testified as well that you've never met Colonel Fender. Neither did I meet... Uh, Officer Mapisa. Officer Mapisa. Pisa. Fender, I was meeting for the first, second time, your worship. I met him at the gate, and then I met him here. Mapisa, I met him for the first time here. Hmm. I've never met him before. Okay. I've never met him before. Why would I lie about someone who stopped me and said to me, pass? It works in my favor. That why would another officer see it correct for me to pass and another officer not see it correct for me to pass, yet they are saving the same law? Mm. Okay. But equally, why would he miss such an important aspect of stopping us? Because the issue here, your worship, is us being stopped and us not cooperating. Why would he miss that in his statement? That is for the court to decide. Argument will be given. Your attorney will know what to do. It is also for me to bring it to the attention of the court. So, but he has said and he's explained and he said that he just allowed you in based on who you are. If he didn't stop the vehicle, he would not have known who was in the vehicle. And you agree with me on the footage that I've played, that your vehicle was behind um, the BMW X5s yes. with the blue lights? Yes. And I don't understand why do you only recognize the blue lights in the two vehicles when the vehicles that went before those two had no blue lights. You don't bring it to the attention of the court 
objective and neutral prosecutor that your worship there are vehicles that are passing you can see them they don't have blue lights after this ones which don't have blue lights they are the ones of the blue lights then malema without blue lights Were you, see that everything happened, the assault and everything that happened here on the day in question, were you late for the, for the cemetery, for the pro, uh, proceedings? When you went inside, you remember the vehicle drove in, I'm just. No, no, we're not late because uh, remember the hash yes. had to park on the side uh, with the coffin. But mm. uh, it will be uh, incorrect for us to arrive late because by the time the coffin comes, we should all be seated. Yes. Yes, so uh, that's what we're pushing for. Okay, but you were, uh, so the hearse was still coming behind? Okay. The hearse was still coming, still, yes, still with coming. the parade. So my question that I want to ask is, if Colonel Fenter just wanted to speak to Vok or his superior or his senior to ask about the vehicle, he could have gotten an answer very quickly. I'm putting it to you that would not have made you late. This whole, if Colonel Fenter could that just call the VOC, got permission, none of this would have happened. You don't need VOC. You need a permit. He doesn't have to call VOC. You either have a permit or you don't have a permit. And a decisive disciplined police officer will tell you, go back. You are parking that sign. There's no need for VOC at all. So the story of the VOG doesn't exist. In the protocol of permit, you go for your car to be uh, security checked. Once it's security checked, your worship, it can't even go to the garage. It goes straight to the designated area under police protection, which is what happened with us. Then we dropped at the stadium. From the stadium, we joined the convoy under police protection to the cemetery. So. We don't need VOG. You don't need VOG. Once a vehicle arrives there and it doesn't have a permit, it's going to be sent away. But on this day, that is not what Colonel Fenter is saying. I understand you're explaining maybe what, what normally happens. And I, and I get you. But on this specific day, Colonel Fenter had an issue with the vehicle. Not you, not accused number two. He had an issue with the vehicle. According to him, the vehicle was not part of the convoy. So now this vehicle came after the, the X5 BMW. He wanted permission from the VOC to see if your vehicle can come in. And your worship, I'm not asking anybody a question because I know I'm not here to ask questions, but the question arises. Why didn't he say the car, because they say he doesn't have a problem with me, doesn't have a problem with yes. the number two, but he didn't put any evidence here that he said, you guys can go in, the vehicle will have to go park on the other side. He has never said that because he's got a problem with us. That's how it's done all the time. Inauguration of the president, opening of parliament, where the president is, there are designated areas for designated dis dignitaries. And if you don't have the vehicle registration, it gets... They said, you know, Mr. Maluma, you can come. Uh, uh, the, the two of you can come, but the vehicle will have to go and park on the other side. He never said that. He just blocked the car. I went out deliberately, hoping that he will recognize me and say, no, 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 it's okay. You go in. This vehicle must go back. Because, your worship, there were people who were entering, uh, walking. They were not driving. Mm -hmm. He could have just said to us, join this. Uh, you go forward, let this car go and park on the other side. There was never such an argument. If anything, they say he was calling Vogue. Vogue for what? To get you, to ask permission for your vehicle to enter, sir. Okay, but because I've got the right to enter, why is he not saying I must enter? He's talking about the vehicle. But why am I being stopped? I'm also a vehicle now. You, you. I, you I'm are not a, a vehicle. Person. You I'm are a, a person. Vehicle. The argument, your worship, is he should have said, which he didn't say, Mr. Malema, uh, Mr. Ndlozi, you guys can walk in, the vehicle must go and park 
at a, an area that is designated for vehicles that are not accredited. He couldn't say that because he knew we were rightfully there. But I want us to bear this in mind that, and we must not lose this side. Here is a vehicle that is not accredited, that has got no right to be there. It pushes through, it goes in, gets to park uh, with president's vehicles, former president, mm -hmm. heads of states, and then you sit there throughout your, your worship. No problem at all. The reason why these cars do go through security check is because you must not bomb those dignitaries. Mm -hmm. Now, this car goes in, attends throughout the ceremony, and there's no problem. It finishes everything. It leaves. There's no way. There's no way in the discipline of presidential protection unit and VIP protection that a car that is not discredited and has not passed the security check for a second, it can spend time with president's vehicles. Why? If... If there's something wrong with it, uh, Your Worship, why didn't they follow us up? Say, no, leave here. We're going to catch them inside. They didn't do that. Yeah. Nothing happened. Colonel approached the driver. When he, went, he testified, he went to the driver, informed the, and the driver said, the leader of the EFF, Naima Lema, was inside the vehicle. He testified that is what the driver said. He said, I looked to the back of the vehicle and I did see Malema, Mr. Malema, was inside the vehicle. I greeted Mr. Malema, he testified. And then informed Mr. Malema that the vehicle cannot enter. That is what he, he never, testified. He never greeted me. Greeted me how? The first time me and him interacted was outside. Mm -hmm. And he said that you were more than welcome to walk inside. That is what he said. Who could have walked inside? Yes. Who could? If he had said that, the way we were so eager to attend the funeral, mm. we could have walked inside. We are not obsessed with vehicles. But There's nothing special about that vehicle. Yes, but he so, said that you can walk inside. No, he didn't say that. He did not say that. No, okay. he didn't say that. And you, when he said that you are welcome to walk in, you said, I will not walk in, I will drive in. That's what Colonel Fainter testified, you said. That is his imagination. Is, is that so? Okay. Your Worship, mm -hmm. I'm just looking at the time. Can the court... Uh, I still how have, many questions? I still have a few questions, Your Worship, so I'm not sure. I think we can still proceed until quarter to three at least, so let's see how far. Unless there's anything else in terms of administration work for the clubs. I'm looking. <laughs> but it did indicate to me, which is what I'm looking. It's fine, quarter to three? Yeah. Yes, I believe we should spend each okay. every minute to this case to get it final. Yes, you, you can be excused. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hart. Yes. Thank you. He said that you can sit if you want to, sir. No, no, I wanted to bring water. Oh, okay, okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're done. Okay. He testified. Um, he said... Colonel Fender then said that he moved to the front part of uh, or the front part or the side of the vehicle. He was standing with his back towards the vehicle. Is that so? Mm -mm. The front. The he was like this. <coughs> so his front was facing the chest the was on the uh, windscreen. Oh, was his was his whole body lying with his hands open? Yeah, oh, like with his with his chest the, on the Yeah. Can I just get clarity? That is not on the video. No. So that have happened prior to what we yes. have seen. Yes. So what, if, uh, what do you see here is when now we're, we're pushing him that, away. 
Yes. But we had spent a lot of time outside the camera. Uh, so where you are starting to see us is where we are pushing. But where is blocking the car it's or even stopping the car, you can't see. It's not on the video, conveniently. You worship. Let mm -hmm. me continue. Yes. Thank you, worship. So let me understand you correctly now. His hands is stretched out. Yes. And his chest, his his body, his his upper body, is literally lying on the vehicle yes. Yes. of of your vehicle. Yes. Okay. That's why I, I used mm. the word that uh, he was like was uh, possessed. Possessed. Yeah, because I've never mm. been in dealing with police for a very long time. I've never seen a policeman behave like that. You know, if the anything, um, he will try to get take a cone, uh, put in front of the vehicle, so that you don't go past. They never uh, 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 block a car with their body. There's always a mechanism. One of such mechanism is to put a cone, or alternatively, you close the gate. Okay, and possibly you can ask his senior. Um, what is going on questioning the vehicle. There's a, another option. You can ask a senior, like you wanted to call Val. What I'm saying is he could also maybe speak to his senior to inquire about the vehicle that you were in. That's also a possibility. You don't talk to your senior uh, uh, on your own. Isn't it you must say to us, guys, you wait here, let me call my senior a walk to check uh, if uh, you must come in or not. He never said that to us. I'm just saying, Your Worship, you come to a car, but who's in this car? No, Julius Malema. Well, the next thing, you, you will go on radio, uh, you are calling yeah. Vogue without telling these people I'm calling Vogue. <coughs> The, the decency would be, okay, he, there's a problem with your vehicle, let me call Vogue or something like that. He never said that. But he testified, sir. He said, I said I will first get permission from Vogue. He no. said he wants to, but he's, he was speaking to the driver. No, I would have picked it up. Uh, remember that uh, the, the reason I got out first was for him to recognize me. Because in, at the back of my mind, once he sees it's me, then he will realize he's making a mistake. It looks like once he saw me, he became more agitated. But he recognized you when you were in the vehicle because the driver said, I'm driving the uh, leader of the EFF. So he no, recognized you. No, you can't recognize you. me. So v Viano is like this. The driver is there, and I'm the, at the back. So for yes. you to recognize me in the Viano, you have to put your head inside the car, uh, and then you will see me at the back. So to say you recognized me in a Viano, not even from the windscreen in the front, your worship, because it's tinted. So when you look at it from the front, it's all dark inside. And then when you are talking from the driver's side, you can't see who's at the back. I know this because all the time they ask, who are you driving? They say Julius Malem. Then they start putting their heads inside, mm. wanting to see who's inside the car. So he didn't do that. He didn't recognize me. That's why I said, let me go outside and speak to him. My hope was that he will recognize me and realize he's making a mistake. But sir, he did testify in court. And he said, I did look through to the back of the vehicle. And I did see that Mr. Malema was inside the vehicle. I greeted Mr. Malema. He said, I did look to the back of the vehicle. He recognized you. I dispute that because he doesn't even remember how many people were in the vehicle, by the way. You dispute that? Okay. You remember he said there were three people. He said there was three people. And um, Officer Pisa also just noted three people in the vehicle. And... Uh, I think three people. Officer Pisa didn't know how many people in the vehicle. As a response? Your Worship, I am in disagreement, Your Worship. He did say that there were three people that he saw in the vehicle, Your Worship. The court will allow us for later. I will rule on it at a later stage after confirming so. Thank you, Your Worship. 
not delaying the proceedings any further, I will allow you to ask the question. But if the court has confirmed that you are not correct, such question and answer will be deleted from the record. You may proceed. Your Worship, it is not in dispute that there was a bodyguard. It is actually brought to the attention of the court by them that a person who appears like Malema's bodyguard then came out. Then how can they be Malema's bodyguard and be the driver and be in Lozi and be Malema and then remain three? And from how it works, uh, generally, is the driver and the bodyguard. So it doesn't work like that. It is you who's pr who brought it to the attention of this court. Uh, you even asked me a question now. Is this the bodyguard? Hmm. So if there was a bodyguard and then there was a driver, then there was a two of us. I know I'm very bad with mathematics, but we are four already. Are oh, you four? Okay. So the reference, just from my learned friend to check, because he disagreed with me, is the transcript of the 7th of April, 2022, page 49. It's my footnote number 202 in my heads of all terms. <coughs> Thank you. Your Worship, I will um, check, Your Worship, because I am of the opinion that he said there was three. I will check that later, Your Worship, yes, just for you may do so. the sake of progress, Your Worship. Yes. There was a lady officer, remember the two female officers that was following um, the two of you when you were pushing Colonel Fenter? Then there came a third person that was sta standing with yes. Colonel Fenter, a yes. third person. Yes. Okay. Do you know who that person is? I don't know them. All three of them, I don't know them. You don't know who that person is? That person is General Zulu. Yes. Okay. Colonel Fenter testified that the General Zulu said, leave, leave. Did you hear that from... Um, uh, 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 General Zulu. Did you but, hear she said that? But in that video, you can see the lady who came third is actually standing by the guardhouse with a uh, fender, and I'm on the other side. It was impossible for me to hear, leave, leave. You didn't hear? Okay. I'm going to ask you about the, 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 the VOC. Did you know that on this specific day, on the day of the incident, that there was a VOC? Did you know that on this day only? I wouldn't know what is a VOC if it's not explained in full worship, because I don't want to agree to things I don't understand. Colonel Fenter explains the venue operation center. He said he wanted to get permission from the VOC. It's the, his seniors who is on the VOC. My question is, did you know about the VOC on the day of the incident? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Okay. You heard um, Colonel Fenter testify that he did not see any visible permit on the vehicle. And he said that he would have still stopped the vehicle um, because it wasn't part of the convoy. I had that. And you agree with me, you came after the X5? Yes. There is no convoy that says if you come after X5, you're not part of the convoy.
Please support your worship. Um, at this point, I've got no questions for the witness here. You sure? No further questions? No further questions at this time. Okay, just up before I allow, allow re-examination, I believe Ms. Hart indicated that she does not have any further questions, but we are still left with the issue that the court needs to rule on what the state have said. Mm -hmm. So if I don't rule at this stage, it will then uh, not be procedural to allow uh, re-examination. So the court will rule on that statement which has been put, and the question was with relationship to how many people was in the vehicle, whether there was three or four people. That was also the questions which was put to Mr. Mapisa in this regard. And at first, Mr. Mapisa's answer was to the aspect that there was one or two people plus the driver in the vehicle. And then it was further put by Mr. Holders that there was four people, and his answer was, I cannot dispute that. Yes, so he cannot remember, mm. and therefore the court will not allow the question to four people was in the vehicle to stand. The court Thank will you. rule, so Mr. Holders, you may proceed with the re-examination. Thank you, Mr. Bertrand. This is the only two issues that I have with my worship. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Malema, you were asked now about the VOC. What I want to put to you in the same part of the argument is that <coughs> Mr. or Colonel Ronkost testified, with, <coughs> and he said as follows. I just want to give you the references so that there can be no disputes about it. He testified that on the day in question, and I just want to give you the position that he held. the acting section head for incident management at the protection and <coughs> security services at the SAPS and on the record page 74 dated month of March 2020 he said that he was in the VOC the venue operational center and the important aspect that I want to put to you sir <coughs> is that he tested for he, he conceded on the cross-examination that being at the VOC he hadn't heard from the complainant until 1715, even though this incident had taken place at 1544. You worship the reference is transcript, 9th of March 2021, pages 128 and 129. In my heads of argument, paragraph 31.23. So now, <clears throat> we know the incident took place, as we see on the video, at uh, 1544. Colonel Bronco said he never heard from Colonel Fenton until 1715. Do you have any comments, sir? Well, uh, Your Worship, it makes that point of uh, being him being on the radio when he was talking to us, being on radio and communicating with folk. That argument falls off because if he was on the radio talking to folk during our time, it will be exactly around this time. So now his own colleagues say he has never called, we didn't hear from him until after five o'clock. So, and it confirms my vision that he has never been on any radio. He has not been attempting to do anything. If anything, he was acting like a person who's possessed and, and completely out of profession. My last aspect, so I'm going to watch you the, uh, ask you to watch the videos my learned friend did, <clears throat> but I'm going to ask you because it's difficult to focus on everything. Focus on the three police ladies in uniform. Yes. And then my question after the video will be, who are they holding back, you or the complainant? Will you please watch?
for the record, you see the vehicles arriving. You can see the one police <coughs> lady on the right-hand side of the screen at the moment. And for the record, they do not have blue lights. Many of those who passed, only these ones have blue lights. Yeah. No blue lights. For the record, the front ones have blue lights and then the yes. stream of vehicles at times. No blue lights. Right. Just <laughs> it's on the first. And for the record, your worship, blue lights does not mean accreditation. Even ministers on that day had to be accredited. That's why some of them went to the stadium through shuttle there to park somewhere and get into a bus. Yet they've got blue lights. So blue lights does not mean accreditation. You see the vehicles arriving, you see the police lady on the right-hand side in a blue uniform. And 1545, the last aspect. There's the other police lady arriving also to the right-hand side. Do you confirm? Yes. Right. Now in the confrontation, I want you to see whom they hold back. You, Colonel Fento, or anybody else? Two X fives. And it should be noted, Lawrence, that before these two X fives, there was a minute gap, I mean seconds gap between the car, the last car, and this one. And then they came in, bumper to bumper, these two, because they are driving together. And for the record, your worship, we are here. We are already here. We are being blocked. The reason why you are being told to look at minutes and count minutes and, and as if we were not part of the convoy, we came late outside the convoy, is not true. We are being blocked. We are here. If you check the outside camera now, you will find us there. But even on the inside, Mr. Malema, in which direction are the people looking? They are looking at the direction, the, the outside direction, because there is an activity there. But we don't know what they're seeing because they don't. We screen. don't see what's happening. But conveniently, the outside video is not brought to this court, so that the court cannot have a total picture of what really transpired and make a decision on half-baked uh, information. Why, well, yeah, everybody is looking at outside there. So the story that yeah. Your car came minutes after. It's neither here nor there because I was blocked outside. Fifteen, fourteen, nine, ten. 
want you to focus, please, sir, on, as my learned friend had asked you, on the ladies. You see them there coming into camera? They put their hands up. Watching them, three ladies. Thank you. Those three ladies in that confrontation, whom do they approach? and hold? Uh, Fante. Do any of them push you or accuse number two back? No. Thank you. Thank you but uh, uh, if you look at the Lawrence, Fante has got the radio there, your worship, uh, on that video when he's standing next to uh, the cut house. He's not calling for backup. He's not calling for why would a police officer who feels under attack not call for backup, not call for Vogue and say we've got an incident? If anything, he calls when we're done and we've left at the cemetery. Thank you, Mr. Pat. When you observed Colonel Fenter, what, what was he doing? Did he look perturbed? How would you describe? No, he was, in, he was in good shape. If you play that video, right. he's continuing with his duties. Uh, he didn't have any problem. Uh, um, he, he, he was uh, interacting What's with his What's his facial people. expressions? He's even laughing. He says when, he's, what, when he panics, he laughs or something. I remember he said something to that effect. He's laughing. He, he had access to all manner of assistance he needed if he was on the right. He could have sanctioned any assistance. He but knew, and for sure, even those police officers, the ladies, reminded him that what you are doing is wrong. Stop it. And most significantly, as you, do you see him summoning any backup or anybody to take no. action after the No. But also, in his own evidence, your worship never said we went inside to look for them or to look for a vehicle. My biggest problem... Uh, your worship is, as you are about to make your own decision, why would a, a car that is not uh, credited, that is not security checked, pass and go and park with the president's cars and other cars that are security checked? What? Because it defeats the purpose. If a car is not checked, and then uh, some two tiny young boys come and push a a well-built police officer, and on the basis of that, you say, no, that car can, park, can still park, even when it has not met the security requirements. He knew, and if he was honest, he was supposed to confess here. But after his investigation, he realized those people had a right to be there. So it's not an assault out of intention, Your Worship. We never left our homes to go and assault a police officer. It was never in our mind. In our mind was to bury our mother in a dignified manner. And uh, uh, we were not going to allow anything uh, to take that away uh, from us. From where I'm sitting, yo, I'm, I, I feel justified that had I not done what I've done, till to date I'll not have a closed chapter because I will not have buried my mother out of the white arrogance of a police officer who think he can do as he wish. If we were wrong, Your Worship, why are these men and women in cloth, law enforcement officers, in, in, not uniform, not in uniform, why are they not joining Fenter? Why are they just standing like that? These are senior people. By the way, Your Worship, a, a special funeral or a state funeral, the parade is constituted by very senior officers. They would have intervened there and there. 
Why would these people just sit like that, stand like that, if there are people who are committing crime? Unjustifiably so. They knew Fenter was doing something wrong. And that's why they did not even intervene. They, they, they could have finished us. The one that Mapisa, who came to speak to uh, accused number two, came, spoke to accused number two, encouraged him in his own ways to go back to a vehicle. How do you beg a, a, a criminal? Why would a soldier beg a criminal? He knew there was something wrong, and that's why he asked us to go back to, into our cars and proceed. Thank you, Mr. I have no further questions. I will only ask the police to come on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Oudas. Thank you, Mr. Malema. You're excused. I believe that may be returned to Mr. Oudas. My intention to call accused too, but time is I believe we have run out of time. The court also want to thank all we court officials. I believe I said coral too, and we are over coral as, as well. Please, I do thank all court officials in this regard. I believe I was approached off record with regards to a postponement date, which is the 1st of July. Yes. That still stands, is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Malema. Friday, 1 July, sir. Yes. Mr. Malema, as well as Mr. Ngloy, you may stand. We have run out of court time, and therefore this matter is now being postponed to the 1st of July, 2022, court number 13, for further evidence. Both of you are on warning and want to appear at half past eight. If you fail to be at court or to remain in attendance until you are excused by the court, it will leave the court to issue warrants for your arrest. Do you understand? Yes. You are then excused, Masar. May the USB, the video evidence be returned to court. The court will take possession. <coughs> the court has been placed in possession of the original charge sheet as well as all the exhibits. The court will remain in possession of such exhibits to prevent that it is not lost for future reference. Yes, to hand to worship yes. the, the mystic. <coughs> it's in the official envelope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Otis. Thank you, Mr. Hart. Court adjourned.